Is it? Have you got any tasty pound cakes? Oh, we're not made up, I haven't. No, I've just sold the lot to Mike Baldwin's machinist. I can make you one up if you hang on a minute. Four, love, not mm -hmm. one. It's a bulk order from the uh, famished crew of the Flying Mucky. <laughs> Three ham and uh, one cheese and chutney. You're the catering officer today, then? Well, it depends on where we are. You see, round here, I'm responsible for foraging and allied creature comforts. It's my territory, see. Do you know, I never thought I'd see you happy in a job of work, Eddie. I am happy, I know. Even though it is hard graft humping them bins. You see, it's job satisfaction. It satisfies the prehistoric instinct of manly hunter. Do you know what I mean? No, not really. No, well, you wouldn't. Being a woman, like. No disrespect, of course, but it's just that us men need to go out and about and hunt for things to drag back to the cave, you see. Fancy. Not only that, you know, there's another thing. You can keep up a front in front of your uh, boss and your neighbours, but you can't keep a front up in front of your dustman. Morning, Squire. Hello, Eddie. I thought there was a bit of a tang in here, you know, sort of insidious pong. Listen, don't look at me if there's a pong, mate. Oh, there definitely is. The old hooter never lies. Yeah, well, it's your cheddar, that's what it is. Mm. Morning. Hi, Hello, Ken, what can we do you for? Oh, no, no, I'm not shopping, I'm collecting, I hope. Whip round for Bet. help her replace some of the things she had stolen. Oh, yeah, I'll give you some up for that, Ken. Hang on, while I just finish these barn cakes yeah. for Eddie. Right. Well, you tapped me for a quid in the Rovers last night. Oh, yes, yes, so you did. A quid? A quid? Well, it's hardly going to break a prosperous businessman like you, is it? Don't you be so flipping free with my money. I don't see you digging your hand in your pocket. Yeah, well, I haven't got any, have I? You better have, or else you're not getting these barn cakes. Oh, I've got enough for them. Anyway, I've got a clear conscience, haven't I? I didn't kick Bet out, bet out in the snow, did I? Oh, I'll swing for you, Gates. Look, for the last time, we did not throw Bet out. We just objected to her boyfriend, that's all. Oh, Eddie, will you pay for these barn cakes before you start a fire? That's £1.40, p, please. Right, love, there you only pulling your legs, Squire. Yeah. Me, I'll tell you what. You give him the change for your barn cake and I'll match it. Now that is a sporting offer. Go on then. It is a far, far better thing I do now than I have ever done before. Thank you. See ya. Well, ladies, I think we're ready to face the human race. <laughs> And if you don't need to open that door for ten minutes, this, I think, a cup of tea is indicated. Oh, it go down very nicely, Mrs. Walker. Get the kettle on. Yes. Bet, you've managed to mark that dress already. Yeah, beer slops. Hazards of the trade, isn't it? Of course, it's really too good for work. I seem to recall buying it for something to do with the town's women's guild. Mm. Certainly wore it once or twice at the town hall. Quite a come down for it, really, having me inside it. Not at all, dear. Rather elegant. Put the kettle on. Yeah. Hey, these dresses. Does she want me to keep them or have you got to give them a back? Don't ask me. What's the policy with them bundles that she takes to the Oxfam shop? Does she lend them or are they a gift? <laughs> not as bad as that. Well, I tell you, I feel like little half an Annie. You're not thin enough for a start. True. But here I am wearing Annie Walker's clothes, keeping in your house. Not that I'm grumbling about that, Betty. I appreciate that. You're very welcome, love. I know. I ought to go home tonight, though. But I can't say I fancy it. You know, when I go in that bed sit, it feels creepy. Like somebody's made it dirty. What's up with your beans on toast? Nothing. Well, get them down you then and stop moping. I suppose this is all on account of Karen, because her dad says you can't see her again. Stupid old beggar. Who does he think he is, anyway? Well, I suppose he thinks he's Karen's dad. Yeah, but forbidding your daughter to see someone, that went out with Queen Victoria. I can see his point of view, Martin. Whose side are you on? Yours. Would you just put yourself in his place for a minute? If you had a 16-year-old daughter who came home rolling drunk... She wasn't drunk. Mm. You might not have been incapable, but she's certainly the worst for drink. I mean, if you were a dad, you wouldn't like it. You wouldn't be pleased about it at all. And you wouldn't be very keen on the fellow that got her that way. Yeah, but... It wasn't exactly like that. Mm. According to Karen's dad, it was exactly like that. Yeah, well, he can say what he likes, but I'm still seeing Karen. Oh, come on, you've blotted your copybook round there. Why don't you write it off to experience? There's plenty of other girls around. I happen to like her, Gren, and I'm gonna see her. If you go round to their house, you'll cause more trouble. Yeah, well, maybe, but I'm still going all the same. Dead stubborn you are. I can't think where you get it from. Right, love. 20 pence, thank you very much. Are you the shop owner? Uh, no, I just work here. Uh, I'd like to see the owner, if he's about. Yeah, hang on. Oh, 
both. Have yeah. you got a minute? Right. What's to do? You're the owner, I believe. It's your licence to sell drink to be consumed off the premises. That's right. What about it? Do you know a local lad lives in the street? Martin Shevesky, his name is. Look, what's all this about? I'll tell you. You've been selling alcoholic drink to that lad. And before you ask me what business it is of mine, I'll tell you that and all. He persuaded my daughter to get drunk on what you sold him. Ah, well, you see what She I... happens to be 16. That's why it's my business. And the lad's underage as well. Excuse me, but it was me you saw, Martin, that drink. Did you know you were committing an offence? Selling alcohol to anyone below the age of 18? Yes, I Look, did. Look, I'll deal but... with this. Look, I'll be quite frank with you, Mr... Uh, Oldfield. Mr Oldfield. We did slip up, yes. We're not denying that. We, we did sell him some drink. It was cider, wasn't it? Mm. But, you see, he said it was for his granny. We wouldn't have given it to him if we thought it was for him. It makes no difference. The law is quite straightforward. You mustn't sell to anyone underage. Yes, well, we know about that. And we're usually very careful, but we did make a mistake. Right. Well, you can take this as a warning. If I hear of you selling any more alcohol to a juvenile, I'll see that you're prosecuted. Right? Good day to you. It's a good job he went. I was just going to tell... Mind you, he's got us over a battle. What have you been doing, Alf? Bootlegging? Nah, it's some, nothing. We sold young Martin some cider and he's given some to his daughter. Mm, we've already had one set to over it with Elsie. He, it's hard life, isn't it? Give us a packet of tea bags. We're going to have to be very careful in future, Deirdre. Oh, don't worry. I wouldn't sell young Martin a can of lager if he'd come in here with a doctor's prescription and a royal pardon. It's not just young Martin, is it? It's any of them that look under 18, you can't tell these days. Still, you know what that bloke said? One more slip up, and he's just the sort of bloke who'll do it on us. Well, no rest for the wicked. I better get off back to work. Oh, by the way, Elsie, I haven't grabbed you for the Bet Disaster Relief Fund yet, have I? I heard there was a collection. Well, I don't mind contributing here. No, thanks. That. And now, uh, if there's any left over, give it to the home for fallen women, will you? Ta-ra, see ya. Ta-ra. Yeah. It's about time you snapped out of it and all. I'm sick of coming in here and seeing you look miserable. I've nothing to be happy and laughing about. That is the wrong attitude. You've got to look on the bright side, haven't you? Why? Well, because that's why. You've got to keep your sunny side up. You've got to look for the silver lining when clouds appear in the blue. Give me one good reason why. All right, I will. Because it takes 153 muscles to get a frown. It only takes 44 to get a smile. So why waste energy? Where are you getting these gems from, Yates? Off the back of a matchbox or where? Don't you be brittle with me, Bet Lynch. You know I'm right. You've got to look for the light at the end of the tunnel. Don't talk to me about the light at the end of a tunnel. We might look it to be an oncoming train. Quite right. Give us a pint. Right. You know, it's thirsty work, this, cheering up barmaids. You'd better give him one and all. Oh, sir. Hey, have you moved back into your flat yet, love? No, not yet. No, she's not going till she... Yes, she's staying with me till she feels like going. You can't stay with Betty forever, you know. I mean, the longer you're going to leave it, the harder it's going to be to move back. Yeah, you're probably right. I'll go back tonight. I won't impose on you any longer, Betty. You're not imposing, lovey. I mean, Len could be right, you know. Hey, I'll tell you what. I'll come round tonight with a fish and chip supper. I'll give the place a nice lived-in atmosphere, you know. So would your socks on the bed end the next morning? No tar. <laughs> not it was further from my mind. Mind you, now you come to mention it, I could be talked into it. Oh, look, we ought to have a bit of a get-together, though, really. Don't you think so, Mrs Walker? Bet ought to have one or two of us round to her flat, you know, to have a sort of a moving-back-in party. It's a very good idea, yeah. Elizabeth. Well, you know me. I'm always game for a party. Mm. How are you fixed, Len? Yeah, sure. Yes, indeed. A function of some sort would be a symbolic exorcism of the malaise caused by the intruders. Yeah. I think Mrs Walker's trying to say that you can't whack a good knees up. Hi. Hello. I was hoping I'd see you. What for? Well, because I wanted to, didn't I? I can't wait. I've got to clock on. Yeah, well, well hang on a minute. What about tonight? Do you fancy the pictures? Well, I can't, Martin. Why? Don't you want to? You know what me dad said, I haven't got to go out with you. Yeah, but, but what about Joe? Joe still wants to go out. You know I do. Well, then who cares what your dad says? Look, I daren't, honest. He's, he's dead against you now. We just have to finish. Well, I don't want to finish. And you don't, do you? Look, I've got to go. Come 
one in, love. Oh, them stairs. Oh, maybe you're a little belter. You brought your record player as well. Yes, I thought you'd be glad of it, because I know yours was taken. Yeah, the swine's pinched it. <sighs> Mind you, it was on its last legs, but they took all my LPs as well. Oh, well, I brought a few of mine. Do you know, it was the collection of a lifetime. Right down to me Rod Stewart albums. They were LPs I'd had 25 years. All my Bill Ailey records. Who? You know, Bill Ailey, Rock Around the Clock and all that. Oh, yes, I remember seeing the film of that. I went with my friend Pauline Wilde and she got carried away and started dancing in the aisle. So the manager said she were a troublemaker and asked her to leave. Of course, I had to go with her. You're very loyal, aren't you, Maeve? Well, she was my best friend. Oh, by the way, Beck, I can't stay very long tonight. Why not? Is your budgie coughing or summer? <laughs> Oh, Harry's very bouncy, thank you. No, it's just that Emily's invited me around to supper like before we knew you were having a party, so I promised I'd go. You're in demand socially, <laughs> kid. I know. Do you know, I haven't been out for weeks, and then I get two invitations for the same night. It's typical, isn't it? Anyway, I brought you a bottle of sherry. Oh, terrific. <laughs> well, if we've got nowt else, we've got music, we've got drink, <laughs> and now we've got a man. Hidey hi, ho de ho, are we down hearted? No, 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 <laughs> let the good times. Where is everybody? You got me and Maeve. What more do you want? You're right, nothing. Here, cup for the ale, oh. Maeve. And there's a little housewarming present for you. Oh, Eddie. And you can't say I got them off the bins. You're a good lad. Yeah, well, I knew you wouldn't have any, and I hate drinking ale straight from the can. How are you going to give it to her, Ken? Uh, well, I'm not going to make a speech, if that's what you mean. Oh, good. Well, she'd only be embarrassed, you know. She gets very confused when anybody's nice to her. Yes, I've noticed. It must be because she hasn't had much experience of it. Uh, I take it you'll be going. Well, I'd like to, but, I mean, if Mrs Walker's going, I've had it. I've got to stop in all the time. Well, I wouldn't have thought it was Mrs Walker's sort of party. Well, no, of course it isn't, but, uh, well, she's a law unto herself, isn't she? She's going. <laughs> Dear. Not exactly looking forward to it. I willingly go for you. I know you will, dear, but I think I ought to show myself a no, gesture of support to bear. She'll be counting on you. Tell you what I'll do. I'll put in an appearance, come back as soon as I can, and then you can go. Yeah. See you later, then. Right, is there anybody hasn't given to the Bet Lynch Benefit Fund? Or is there anybody who would like to give twice? What do you give over shaking that damn thing? Times are hard, you know. If I put any more in that, I won't be able to afford a bottle to take with me. Oh, are you planning on going? Well, yeah, I thought it might be a bit of a giggle, you know. Well, I'm not keen, all crowded into a little bed sit. It's not going to be much of a do, you know. Well, you've no need to go if you don't want to, darling. Oh, if you're set on going, I'm going with you. Why? You think he needs keeping an eye on us, Summer? Len? Only when there's competition. I haven't noticed any lately. Are you going, Elsie? No, I'm having a night in, sure. Uh, no. Mind you, I'll say this for Bert Lynch. She does pull a bloke occasionally, like, uh, who was it? That fella? Dan Johnson. <laughs> she was welcome to him, Chuck. Cheerio. Cheerio. Night. Uh -huh. You were coming the old acid a bit there, weren't you? Well, she asked for it, making out I was jealous of Bert Lynch. When are you? Have I any reason to be? Have you, well as well? There we are, then. <laughs> well, come on, girls. We got the women, got the wine. Let's have the song. I didn't bother bringing any classical. No, you did right, Nervous. These are your pop records, are they, love? Got some golden oldies, are you? Well, I've had them quite a while. Yes, you can say that again. Russ Conway, Jimmy Young, Semprini at the piano. Oh, now he is one. Oh, I used to love him. Oh, Dickie Valentine. So did I. He had a lovely voice. His hair was smashing too. Who? Dickie Valentine. Never heard of him. Just think, though, Maeve, if Dickie Valentine was setting off on the pop scene today, he'd have to change his name, wouldn't he? I suppose he could call himself Valentine Dickie. Oh, mm. <laughs> let's have this one. <laughs> This is where the orgy's happening. You've just missed it, but come in all the same. Hey, um, present for you. A pair of jeans, denim shirt, a couple of tops. Size it should be all right, unless you changed in the last couple of years. Thanks, Mark. It's nice of you. Oh, no, I'm a lovely fella. You're modest as well. <laughs> I'm going to nip to the bathroom and change. Annie Walker's dresses are going on my nerves. 
Hello, Mrs. Walker. I'm glad you could come. Hello, dear Mr. Baldwin. Just a little offering from Elizabeth and myself. Not enough to feed the 5,000 for a start, anyway. That's terrific. I didn't know how on earth I was going to feed everybody. <laughs> well, I bought a bottle of scotch. Let me get you a drink for a change. Oh, thank you, Mr. Baldwin. I don't suppose you remember this, do we, Eddie? It was called the creep. It was sort of dance craze, you know, like the twist. Oh, yeah. You sort of shuffle forward and then you shuffle back. Oh, all right, go on. What? You just asked me to dance. I've done no such thing. It's not to be ashamed of, mate. All right, I'll ask you then. Well, I can't because I'm going anyway. Going? Going where? Well, I'm going to have supper with Emily and Arnold. The party's just getting going. You've got a great talent for missing out on the good times, haven't you? I've been doing it all my life. Oh, I wish you'd straighten your flaming face. It looks like a wet week's week. Yeah, I'm fed up. Oh, there's plenty of girls about. You don't get fed up just because one girl's fallen out with you. She hasn't. It's just her dad. How do you know she's not using him as an excuse? Like just saying he's put the block on you. Just to save her telling that she's fallen out with you. No, she still fancies me. I'm going to ring her. Is that a good idea? Yes. Well, suppose her dad answers. Oh, I'll see. Why don't you mind your own business? I don't know why I get involved. I really don't. Hi. It's me. No, don't ring off. Hello? Oh, it's a bit tricky because of your dad. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Well, look, can you slip out for an hour? Well, I could meet you somewhere. Tell you what, why, why don't you come round here? Go on, just for half an hour. OK, I'll be waiting. She couldn't really talk much because of her dad, but she says she's going to try and come over for a while. Is that all right? Of course it is. I told you, she still fancied me. Mind you, I don't blame her. Hooray! I thought you'd forgotten how to smile. Another sandwich, Mavis? Oh, no, thank you. No, I've had an elegant sufficiency. Oh. Well, uh, what about uh, another cup of tea? Oh, no, if I have any more, I shall be quite a wash. <laughs> I'll just uh, take these cups through to the kitchen. Oh, no, bother. It's no bother. Thank you. Thanks. Now you're a married man, Arnold. You'll have to get used to being waited on hand, foot and finger. Yes, I dare say I will. Is she going to stop here all night? She is a guest, Arnold. Oh, she seems more like a resident. I, I did ask her to come. Yes, well, I wish you'd asked me for... <clears throat> I shall have to pop round to your shop tomorrow. Uh, pick up a bit of cuttlefish bone for Harry. Harry? My budgie. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, there's no need to make a special journey, Mavis. Arnold will fetch one home for you, won't you, Arnold? Oh, yes. yes. Yes, of course. Oh, that's very kind. I'll call round for it tomorrow night. I gather that you have to get up very early in the mornings, Mavis. It's a cross I have to bear. Get the newspapers ready for the delivery boys. Well, sooner you than me. I suppose you have to go to bed early, too. Well, yes, I do usually. But it's not my early turn tomorrow. It's Rita's turn, so I can have a lie-in. So I can stay up late tonight. Oh, very nice. So, Bet's party was getting into full swing when you left. Oh, yes, it was really warming up. You know, dancing and that. Well, it's a pity you're missing it, Mavis. You should have stopped on. I promised Emily, you see. No, but we'd have understood, wouldn't we, Emily? We wouldn't have been offended. I wish I had something more comfortable for you to sit on, Miss Fine, Arnold. Fine, dear. Perfectly comfortable. And you look very comfortable in those clothes. Yes. They're a present off Mike. Oh, they're rejects, Mrs Walker. They're probably full of pieces by the weekend. I yeah. doubt it. I noticed that you were very quick to get out of the dress I gave you and into something more casual. Well, you know me, Mrs Walker. Always keen to try something new on. Mm, I didn't want to try well, my clothes. Now, come on, admit it. No, I, I was very glad of them. I still am. Well, this is much more your line, dear. And nobody wants to wear anybody else's cast-offs. 
No, honestly, Mrs. Walker, they're smashing dresses, well, and I love them. I'd like to give you something, Bed. And I don't want you to think of it as a custom. Now, I know that all your jewellery and trinkets were stolen, and I'd like this to start you off again. Oh, Mrs. Walker. My Aunt Florence gave it to me some years ago. It's a peridot seed purse. Not very valuable, dear. It's only nine carat gold. But it's pretty, and I thought you'd like it. Right. It's beautiful. I don't know what to say. I'll treasure You're it. You said enough. I'll get you the same again, shall I, Mrs. Walker? And I tell you what, if the denim trade doesn't improve, I'll ask you to take me on as a barman. <laughs> I might <laughs> agree, Mr. Baldwin. <clears throat> hey, look what Mrs. Walker's <clears throat> given me. Oh, that's lovely. Hey, you'll have to look after that, won't you, love? Keep a tight grip on your handbag. Don't you worry, I will. Do you know everybody's been great? I've been given all sorts of things. <laughs> and there's more to come. Here. What's this? We had a whip round. Well, it would be Betty Turpin's idea, really. There's fifty-six pounds in there. Fifty-six pounds for me. Look, if you don't want it, we'll have it back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew I had so many friends. That'll be Karen. Oh. I want a word with you, lad. Who is that? Good evening. My name's Oldfield. In case you don't know it, your son has been pestering my daughter. No, I haven't. Just a minute, Martin. Mr Oldfield, I think there's one or two things you ought to be put right on. First of all, Martin is my grandson. And in the second place, he's not been pestering your daughter. He's just been going out with her, which I think is quite normal practice for two kids of that age. He rang her up tonight. You don't deny that, do you? Oh, why should right. I? Right. Well, that's what I call pestering. I've told her she's got to have no more to do with it. Don't you think you're being a little high-handed about this? No, I don't. Perhaps you don't know. This lad plied my daughter with drink. She's only 16. He's only 17 himself, I understand. Well, that might be acceptable behaviour for you. Look, I already know about that, and he's had a rocket for it. I'm glad to hear it. Not only did he force drink on her, he, he got her to lie about it and all. She came home with some cock and bull story that he coached her in. Well, I don't want that sort of lad anywhere near my daughter. I think you're deliberately making mountains out of molehills. Well, don't you come round our house. No more phone calls, just you stay away from her. You know what's good for you. No, just a minute. Because if you don't, Sonny, you're going to be very, very sorry. Are you threatening the lad? I'm just giving the lad fair warning. Because if you are, I'm going to send for the police. You are looking at a policeman, madam. Sergeant, as it happens. Right, lad. You've had your warning. Now think on. Better take notice. Good night. Some gangs won't do this, you know. Some gangs are made of punters. Hunt their own bees down the kennel. Yeah, and I know I've met them. Yeah. Mind you, it depends on the gaffer. Now, Arthur's all right. Don't win for these restricted practices. We're very well liked round here. Hey, when I was on Charlie Fellows' gang up Crumson, all black, he'd have the punches, put their own bins in the car, and then rake the tip if you got half a chance. <laughs> you never got sausage at Christmas time, you know. But Arthur's all right. Though. Very well liked round here we are. Hey! Great perks on this job, aren't they? Morning, love. Invite us in, are you? Do you have to empty them things in the middle of the night? It's seven o'clock in the morning. I thought you were one of the early risers. You know, the papers. Not Mondays. Mondays, seven o'clock in the morning, is the middle of the night. Now, make less noise. Len, come in. Who the hell asked you to give us an early morning call? Very troll, Squire. Very troll. What was I saying? He was just saying how well liked we are around here. Oh, I... And you can keep quiet and all. Oh, come on. Worst things happen to see. Give us a smile. Oh, snap out of it, will you? I've got to live with you, and I've got more things to worry about than you having a face like a wet week. What am I supposed to do? Laugh about it? Look, I know you like Karen. She was a nice girl, 
But don't blame other people for things you've brought on yourself. Yeah, a couple of drinks, a couple of flaming drinks. Look, when you are the father of a 16-year-old girl, you won't think of it as a couple of drinks. You will think of it as the first steps on the road to ruin. Yeah, well, he had no right to come round here calling the odds. Oh, you do I'll pick him, don't you? Well, I didn't know he was a police sergeant, did I? Any road, what's up with you? You were great last night. You give him a right room for his money. Look, what I say to you when you're on your own and what I say to you in front of other people is a very different thing. Of course I'm on your side. Your family. But that doesn't mean to say you can't be wrong. Often not our family are. Yeah, it's always me, isn't it? Look, I'm proud of you. You're not sulking in a corner like most kids of your age would be. You've still got a bit of Grimshaw in you. Grimshaw? Your great-granddad. Didn't your mother never tell you nothing? Tell you what, you would have made mince me to that fella. Police sergeant or no police sergeant. Well, well, what are you talking... And after he'd put him in hospital, he would have figured out who was right and who was wrong. I'm learning a bit of that now. I mean, it's pretty hard, and he'd have been sorry. But I'm learning and I'm trying. Well, are you on my side, or are Of you? course I'm on your side, like I said. But try and put yourself in her father's place. She might be Marilyn Monroe to you, but she's Shirley Temple to her father. So just think of that and be careful. Look... All I'm saying oh, is... Oh, get your breakfast. Is he had no... Get your breakfast. Oh, go on. They're very light. They're delicious, dear. They had such a big breakfast. Now, tell me all about the Isle of Wight. Do you know this is the first chance we've had to have a little chat since you came back from your honeymoon? It is, isn't it? It was lovely. We had one or two rainy days, but on the whole it was very pleasant. Where did you stay? Shanklin. Oh, lovely, yes. Jack and I went there soon after the war. 1949, 1949, 30 years ago. There was a lovely little model village. God's Hill, was it? Anyway, I know we went by bus. Well, I don't know. We didn't venture inland. We saw a lot of the coast, though. We went over to Osborne House, which was rather splendid. My dear, one of the perks of being a queen, to be able to build a house in a situation like that. <laughs> but the Victorian clutter, I'm sure that you didn't pick up any furnishing ideas for your new bungalow. <laughs> um, our new... Uh... Well, Arnold was chatting to me last night. He was telling me that you're going to live in the country. My dear... Dear, shall I be envious? And shall I miss you? Where were you thinking of, dear? Cheshire or further afield? I'll mention Derbyshire. Oh, uh, well, uh, actually, um... Say no more. I can guess. You've had a little contretemps, haven't you? I'll make sure you win. <laughs> <laughs> Those cakes were delicious. Have another one. I wouldn't dream of it. So much me, get your own bagging out. I haven't got out. You haven't got out? No, no, it's, it's all right, I'm, I'm not hungry. I'm not honest. Have you seen your eyes? They're like two cross knives and forks, two bits of bread. You'd have my arm in a butty. Here. Here's yours. Yeah, take it before I change my mind. What's up? I left the missus last night. What, she chucked you out? The jerkers like jumped me out of water. out. Every right to as well, the way she was behaving. You don't know what it's like. Coming home, not knowing who you're going to find there. Insurance man, the red man. That district work fella from across the road. She like that, your missus? Well, you don't know till it's too late. You know, the more I hear about marriage, the more I'm glad I walked the other way. There's a lot of heartbreak. Where'd you keep last night, then? Albert Park on the bushes. Albert Park? Well, what else did I do? I was skinned. You don't give me a lot back, you know, from your pay packet. Well, you have had it rough, haven't you? Mm. I've tried to sell the army tonight. I've got a few bob in the post office. She don't know now about that. Oh, no, don't bother with the Sally army. Look, uh, I'll fix you up with Jigs. I'll have a word with uh, Monkey and his missus. I used to lodge with them. I'll have a word with him. His missus is a bit uppity, but Monkey's a good mate of mine. Share the rooms together. 
Walton University, class of 75, you know. In the neck. Yeah, and in the neck, if you want to be clear about it. It'll cost you, mind. Food's not up so much, but there's plenty of it. Yeah. These are great, these are. Ah, yeah, well, these are from my other family, you know. Yeah. Cut above monkey of his missus. What a morning. Just in time. Uh, something smells good. Have you been busy? A continuous stream of little boys and girls, all clutching anything up to 50 pence in their hot little hands, and all wanting pedigree puppies. Oh, bless them. Oh, bless them indeed. Ah, how was your morning? Oh, quiet. I had Mrs. Walker around. Oh, yes, that was nice for you. You needn't say it like that. We had quite a nice chat. She told me about the country bungalow we're buying. Oh, yes. In Derbyshire? We discussed it. Not Derbyshire, we didn't. We discussed moving, but not the depth of the country. I had somewhere like Cheadle in mind at the farthest. Well, I was making tentative inquiries, nothing more. Well, I gathered that, but... Wouldn't it have been better to have talked it over with me before you made even those? Why? Is that art of surprise lost forever? Now, be honest, which would you rather I did? Asked you if you wanted a new fur coat or nonchalantly threw one round your shoulders? Oh, I couldn't wear a real fur coat. No, and I wouldn't buy one on principle. Well, a diamond necklace, a, a ruby-studded watch. Oh, well, that's different. A bungalow in the country. I wanted to put the brochure in front of you. All hollyhocks and rambler roses and say, this is our new home. I might not want to live in the country. Oh, you will. You will. This is excellent, Sue. Yeah, it's just bad luck, is that? You see, it's all due to the overpopulation of Her Majesty's prisons. You see, the magistrates are giving them shorter sentences, fining them and letting them out early on parole. If Jimmy the Dip had picked a screw's pocket, which he has a habit of doing, and being caught, which he also has a habit of doing, then his uh, parole would have been cancelled. And your knees would have been under Monkey's table instead of his. As it is, it's just bad luck. Uh, no chance here, I suppose. Nah, not a monkey's. Hey, and that's not a witticism. It's just that it took me all my abundant personal time to get myself in. Hey, hang on, though. How long were you thinking of? Oh, just a couple of days. Get myself sorted out, you know. I've got my eye on some digs, hey. But I'm not sure. I've emptied a post office account. Two or three days, a week at the most? That's it, yeah. And I don't mind paying me fair whack. I'll tell you what, you say them words exactly as you said them to me, to Oggy. Have a shrewd feeling you're in. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm, that was an excellent meal. Good. You're not angry with me, are you? No. But I have fallen from grace a little. I must admit, I am rather disappointed. Come over here. I'd better clear the table. Come over here. Now, if I have a fault... No, 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 I don't mean that. I have several, as you'll find out. But if I have an overriding fault, it is that I'm prone to sudden enthusiasms. I do tend to get the bit between my teeth, and it can, I agree wholeheartedly, it can be very disconcerting for people around me. But I'm rarely wrong. Now, I know that may sound immodest, but it's true. Now, most of my past enthusiasms have been to do with business, admittedly, but I rarely back a loser. But, Arnold... This isn't a question of whether or not you buy a few stocks and shares. This is where we live. The most important decision of our lives. We've already made the most important one. Oh, no. But this 
is important too. I might not want to live in the heart of the country. I might not want to leave my friends. Now, look, let's be logical. Go to the front door, look at the view. Now, do you prefer a shirt factory to rolling fields, hills, woods? Now, take a deep breath. Is that really the kind of air you want to breathe for the rest of your life? People are important too. But you're a gregarious person, Emily. You make friends easily. You join in with the life of the community. You've done it here. You do it wherever you went. I still You know feel... what you're saying, don't you? You're saying that I'm not enough for you. Oh, no. Now, that's not fair. I don't mean it that way at all. No, I know you don't. I know what it is. You're frightened of change. I only want to talk things over before... Well, we the... will! You shall, at great length. Look, I'll bring home some brochures tonight. You see... Now, look, what harm is there in looking at brochures? None. Woman, you wear me out. Now, go and clear the table. Stanley, you like him? Who the hell's he? Good old Stan, true to form, eh? This is uh, Johnny Webb, fellow executive off the bins. Stanley Ogden, our genial host. How do? How do? To get out for me. In the oven, Stan. Ah. Leave the uh, introductory approaches to me, all right? Oh, it's flipping hot. Well, that's what ovens are for, Stan. Whew. What are you doing here? Well, I have. Uh, I'll tell him. It's just that uh, he chokes up when he tells anyone. You see, uh, he's left his missus. Due to uh, infidelities on her part and certain other matrimonial uh, difficulties, you know what I mean? Of course you do, Stan. No, it's just that we thought that, uh, as the family bed has been denied him, like, that, uh, well, uh, we thought perhaps he could get his head down here for a day or two. No chance. Just while Hilda's away. Did you notice the subtle reference there, Stan? While Hilda's away, eh? Say your piece, Johnny, go on. Hey. Tell him what you said to me. Oh, I am. Well, I'm, I don't mind paying me fair whack. While Hilda's away. While Hilda's away. No longer. Not a minute. Things have gone wrong before, you know. That is why I'm determined nothing will go wrong this time, Stan. Look here. Uh, I'll leave you two to make the financial arrangements, all right? I've made my mind up yet. Go on. Right, good night. See you. Well, it's, uh, very good of you, Stan. Twenty-five quid, huh? Twenty-five? And you only pays twenty. Oh, that's a long booking, you see. You only stay in a week, aren't you? And it's more expensive for a short letting, you know. What do I get for that? Bed, breakfast, evening meal. Evening meal. Do you like spuds? Yeah. You'll get plenty of spuds. Oh, right then. Twenty-five quid it is. In advance. Oh, yeah. Um. Ah. Hey. Hey. So, this is where you make your fortune. This is it. Well, you can see, can't you? Mmm, good smell, though. I like the smell of wood. I'd rather have the smell of money. Oh, I might be able to bring a little your way. We're thinking of moving. I don't know whether you've heard. Everyone else seems to. Anyway, I want a few jobs doing. A bit of titivating, is that it? Exactly, titivating. I mean, I don't want you to paper over every crack. Why not? Everybody else seems to do that nowadays. A roll of paper covers a multitude of sins. Yes, well, I'm speaking figuratively, actually. The decorations are fine. Oh, it's just one or two other things. A new door, mainly. You know, um, something a bit more modern. A hardwood, um, patterned glass panels, you know the sort of thing. It'll cost you. Well, I know it won't be cheap. What could you do for me? Are you prepared for a shop? Go on. It'll cost you about 80 quid after I put it in. Yes, that's all right, as long as you do a good job. Oh, I'll do a good job, all right. Well, give us a call and measure up, and then I'll discuss the other things with you. There's a window ledge that's going and a skirting board that's uh, yeah. coming How away. How about five o'clock? Will that do you? That'll be fine. You know, I'm just trying to think what this place reminds me of. 
Wilbur Navi. Good <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Duckworth, will you do us a favour? I can't, as long as you don't want any money. No, will you give Karen a message for me? I come round earlier, but I couldn't find anyone to ask. Ah, oh, is it a love letter? Oh, no, no, will you tell her to meet me at Elsie's straight after work? Hey, watch it. I only want to talk. I've heard that before, and all. What's up, have you to fall out? No. Well, some at Sam, because she's had a face like a yard of tripe for the past week. Yeah, well, will you tell her? Ah, go on, then. I've been young myself. Oh, ta. You don't say ta. You say you still are young, Mrs. Duckworth. <laughs> you still are young, Mrs. Duckworth. <laughs> That's better. Oh, oh God, she have been running after you ever since you passed the cafe. Oh, well, I do tend to walk rather quickly. Is that all it was, my magazine? You shouldn't have bothered. Well, I, I did shout after you, but I, I don't suppose you heard me, but... I thought with all your plans, you might just like um, to have it a bit earlier this week. Yes, my plans. Mm, I expect you've, you've got a lot you want to tell me. I, I could come round later on. I've got some... Oh, dear, it wouldn't be convenient. Uh, perhaps another day. Oh, fine. And uh, thanks for the magazine. Hello. Oh, oh, hello. Well, we're out of the back here. Yeah, I'll just put a piece in. You don't need a whole new windowsill there. No, and you'll paint it for me. Yeah, I'll do it up for you. And... We're just doing a bit of tarting up, you know, to sell the place. No, 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 not in front of Emily. Her conscience is better developed than mine. <laughs> Take no notice, he's joking. i better go and measure your front door, aren't I? They're all different in this street. Well, there's nothing like a good first impression. Oh, by the way, I've got some, um, some brochures here. There's a place just outside Bakewell. It's a dream. A dream. Oh, Len! Uh, that, that skirting board. Right. It's only me from over the seats and back. It's been the same, Len. Yeah, you're home, sweet soul. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to go out and get some, you know. Well, it's <laughs> nothing stinny about Johnny, is there? Not if I'm well trapped. Oh, you've been well trapped. I've been thinking, uh, who can sleep on the sofa? I'm sleeping on no sofa. Hey? I said I'm sleeping on no sofa. Not for 25 quid a week, I'm not. 25 quid? For that sort of money, I'm having a bed. Oh, well, uh, you'll have to sleep down here, then. Well, I hell is like. I'm paying an all, you know. I'm getting out from you at all. Yeah, but I'm saving it up for your elder. I'm a paying guest, and I'm sticking to me pit. I'll tell you what, if anybody's kipping down here, it's the geezer what's coining it. And I'm looking at him right now. Right? Right, now we've sorted that out, we'll have a little drink, eh? I've forgotten about them. Yeah, well, you won't miss them, will you, Stan? Put ours in the kitchen, Johnny. Right. There you go. Okay, He's a right in that lad of yours, isn't he? Hey. Young Martin. He's got a right cheek and all. He came in here the other week, he wanted two large bottles of cider. Him just till out of his flipping nappy. Well, you didn't sell him to him, did you? I should think I didn't. He got him though, didn't he? He came in here. He was going to tell me off. How come he can get him down at the corner shop when I won't serve him here? It must have been Deirdre, because, well, Elf knows him too well. Oh, Martin? No, not Martin. The new superintendent. You know, now you do you? You don't know half what's going on around you. It's his petty, that serving drink to miners. It's all right. I reckon it's one of his own kids that got it. Yeah, that'll be it. Any road, he's carving this town up, I'll tell you. If the law find out, Alf will be in a right mess. He's got the magistrates on his side and all. Take Jimmy Bird up Pendleton Road there. Maximum fine, took his licence off him and they said if the good to put him in prison. Want the rest of this tonic? Yeah, yeah. You don't know what he's like. You can't reason with him. Well, what does your mother say? It doesn't matter. She won't go against me, Dad. Well, look, do you want to go and see me, or don't you? Of course I do. You know I do. Well, there's no reason why we can't, as long as we're careful. I mean, you could come round here. Wouldn't she mind? No, she's on our side. She said so. We'd have to keep it quiet, though. What do you think? Well, I'm going to go and see you. I want to go and see you, too. 
was she doing here? I asked her to come. Well, ask her to go. What for? Because I say so. That's what for. Now, go on. You stay where you are. Now, listen. What did your father tell you? He said if you saw him again, there'd be trouble. Did he or did he not say that? Now, I'm warning you, lad. There will be trouble and not just for you. Now, go on. Get out. I don't want to see you again. But you're on our side. You said you was on our side. Oh, you're rotten, you are. Rotten! Here you come down. Do you always eat standing up? Have you had something to drink? I don't want to drink. You can't go out to work without some hot drink inside you. <laughs> Martin! What? Atmos for the best. Yeah, go on, say it. I'll probably thank you one day. Perhaps you will. I don't think so. Ah, oh, I'm glad you're already made. We got a lot on today. Yeah, I know you told me last night. What the hell's up with him? He was in a dream all yesterday. Well, can't you guess? I asked him if it was a girl. He said no. Oh, well, you were right first time. As long as it's nothing serious. Oh, take no notice of me, Gran. Suppose she tells me Dad, tells him we're still seeing each other. She wouldn't do that. Well, if she said I have to come to your house anymore. Yeah, I know, but she wouldn't tell you, Dad. She just wouldn't do it. Don't you two see enough of each other on a night? Take no notice of her love. She's only jealous. I know. I wish I had a fellow waiting for me every morning. <laughs> <laughs> some hope. I know. Mind you, the woman's supposed to conduct used to give me a raspberry truffle every morning. Oh, come on. <laughs> so I'll see you at lunchtime, then. Do you think we should? Yeah, of course I do. All right. Ta-ra. See you. Come on, then, mate. I see you put the kettle on for us, Stan. I dragged him with his part on, on the gas stove. Didn't know he could speak so really, did you, Johnny? <laughs> what are you scoffing? My breakfast, a bacon butt. Do you know how long ago we had ours? Two hours ago, and then we only got jam. Tough. Not exactly the perfect host, is he? More well, like a beach whale. I'm not as a brew. Listen, I don't think you're giving him value for money, Stanley. No need to now. I've got his money. Another thing. What? I'm not sleeping with my backside on there, my feet on there again. It's bad for my back. You have to sleep two in a bed. Oh, hang on. That wasn't in the contract. It is now. Another thing, too. Yeah? It goes on Friday before Ilda gets back. Definite. Definite? Definite. Oh, I tell you what, I'm ready for this. Everything seems heavier today, as if I'm losing my power. It's not as if I'm getting my share, either. Johnny? Huh? Have you got 25 quid in your pocket? Yeah, why? Just uh, stick it on the table, will you? Understand these nose. I want to try a little experiment. Now, Stan, what were you saying about uh, Johnny leaving on Friday? He does. And about the share in the bed? They do. Do you see them, Stan? Go on, smell them. There's another 25 spondulics there. Or 60 pints at a rough calculation. Or six nights out. Or 12 liquid dinners. Yeah. Starting to lick your lips, aren't you, Stanley? There's a little uh, gleam in your eye. I wouldn't mind betting your palms are sweating and all. It's like a sexual experience, if you can remember what one of them is. Now, let's try it again. What were you saying about uh, Johnny leaving on Friday? Well, maybe I was a bit uh, hasty. And the sleeping arrangements? Oh, it's not so bad, really. That's right, Stan. You keep it like that and that 25 quid will be yours. <laughs> On Friday, mate. You'll have to be a bit more handy with the frying pan as well. Do you mean we got time for the bacon butty now? Well, why not? I'll be out of sort of engaged, isn't it? Put a fuse in for that winner in next street. Again. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are, Stan. When you've finished your bacon butty, of course. But, eh, uh, don't be too long about it, eh? I suppose you think you're clever, Yates. Oh, clever, Stan. I just know you. I know how vulnerable your willpower is to the promise of a pint. Still, it could be worse, you know. You could be sticking scent behind you there. <laughs> hey, is that the lot, mate? Yeah. Right, good. I'll get the uh, the boilers in at dinner. You know exactly what you've got to do, do you? Yeah, well, I should do. You've told me often enough. Hey, 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 hey. 
That's the second time you've been lippy to me today, and that's twice too many. Yes, yeah, sorry. What's up? Do you fancy a bird that doesn't fancy you? I shouldn't bother too much. They're thicker on the ground than dogs at Crufts. No, it's not that. You play hard to get, that's the way to get them. You know, they come running after that, no danger. But there's one thing you should never do. Let them see that you're upset by it. Because they start rubbing it in then. All right? Yeah, ta. See you later then, eh? Ta-ra. Be good. It's not good enough, Emily. It's only just gone nine, love. Yes, well, he should have been here at half past eight. He knows I have to get to the shop. And another thing, you usually find that people who can't be punctual are bad workmen. Well, I don't think you need worry on that score, Arnold. Len's got a pretty good reputation. I'll go. How do you do? Uh, so I'm just off to the shop. Oh, I well, there's no rest for the righteous, is there? You will finish it today, won't you? I mean, you have got a door, haven't you? There'll be no snacks. It's in the van. Yes, well, I'll take a look at it. Oh, by the way, don't take the old door away, because the wood might come in for something useful. Yeah. I'll see you later. Yeah. I'm afraid he's got rather a thing about punctuality. He's late for work, is he? No, you were arriving here by about half an hour, as a matter of fact. But only half an hour? Well, that's dead on time in my book. <laughs> Emily? Uh, yes? I always work that little bit better if I've got a pot of tea inside me. It sort of gets me going, you know. I'll put the kettle on. What are you smiling at? Just people, then. Well, it was bound to make a difference, wasn't it? Possibly. But I, she changed far more than I thought she would, and far more quickly, too. Mm. In what way has she changed? Well, it's difficult to put it into words, but... Well, she just doesn't seem as friendly somehow. You know, I think you're imagining it. No, I'm not, because it's happened to me before. When a man comes into your girlfriend's life, it's like she suddenly has a personality change. Oh, now, come. I'm sure you're exaggerating in Emily's case. Do you know, I went away for a week's holiday once to Fleetwood with a girlfriend called Sylvia Potts. Well, she was very shy, was Sylvia. Shyer than me, even, but she was a very good swimmer. So on the second day, we went to the open-air baths. And she dived in, same time as this boy did, and well, they sort of swam off together. And? Hmm? Oh, well, that was the last I ever saw her till the day we were due to go back. She'd been out and she'd bought herself an ankle chain and some black underwear. Really? Hmm. I'd spent most of the week playing crazy golf with a wig maker from Scunthorpe. Oh. Well, I'd best get back. Bye, Mrs. Walker. Bye, dear. That girl! Oh, sorry, Mrs. Walker. I wasn't yeah. listening, sir. The lads, they lost again last night. <laughs> it's all very depressing. Well, I'll tell you what I was saying, shall I, Fred? I said, check the cellar. Hose the floor down, bring up some bottled beers, go to the bank for some change, tidy the yard, and then promptly at 11.30, open up. Now, that should stop you feeling depressed about the lads, shouldn't it? Yes, Mrs Walker. Oh, I don't care if she does. She won't. She doesn't often come round here at dinner time. Where are we going? Thought we'd get some pies and some chips and that and go and walk in the park. It's a bit cold. Yeah, well, there's nowhere else to go. All right. Look at them two again. Love's young dream. Nah, uh, love's young dream that's a marriage is into nightmares. Oh, you're bitter, yo. It's no one that's bitter. Do you know what I said? I call him now, bottom club. Bitter, Bill. <laughs> they have. God knows what they're calling at betting shop. A flaming clown. There you go, Oggles. Three meat, three meat and tatey. Thanks. I say, what are you doing down there, you and Yatesy? Entertaining a couple of birds while your missus is away. Facts like that get turned into rumours. And how ill there is. So shut up. Sorry. Hey, it's Mrs. Walker. Hello, 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 Mr
it's not closing time yet. You'll get chucked out at Bulls as you'll need to see you coming out of pub at this time. Oh, well, I heard you two were coming, so I'm getting out, aren't I? Do you know, I don't know what it says most, him or her. If you ask me, then it must be between either of them. Come in, girls, instead of anybody in here. Hey, now, don't you start. <laughs> what are you having? Two bottles of lager at menu. Menu, there you go. Do you, do you know any fellas that would stand outside at a factory waiting to catch a glimpse of me in her first thing on the morning? Well, I would myself, only uh, first thing in the morning I'm usually too exhausted. Know what I mean? Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> Why? Meaning got yourself a night job at Abattoir's. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, that was good, that kid, coming from you. <laughs> Bad worry. <laughs> Have you got yourself a night job at Abattoir? Now, ladies, I can highly recommend the Scotch broth, even though I did make it myself. No, thanks, Mrs Walker. We don't like foreign food, do we, kid? <laughs> <laughs> no. Busy morning. I'm putting a new door on for Emily. Oh, sprucing it up, are they ready for selling? <laughs> I suppose that's the idea, yeah. How did you find Emily? Did she seem happy? Very. I think she's done rather well for herself. Do you like Arnold? He's... All right, yeah. to do a job, he makes a botch up of it, and as a result, you nearly cut your hand off. Oh, I haven't quite done that, well, though. you could have done. You could easily have done. Well, I did push rather hard, perhaps too hard on glass. Len did say that it... Now, look, don't try to make excuses for him, Emily. If the door had been made to fit in the first place, you wouldn't have had to push it. Well, now, would you? I suppose not. Well, it's still bleeding. Yes. Look, you're going to the hospital. I'll get the car. Oh, I... What's for pudding? You must be joking. Pies from the Rovers aren't exactly what you call a gourmet meal, Stanley. We had chips with them. Yeah, only cos we insisted. They weren't on the menu. It cost me a mint. I'm gonna be out of pocket. You're being paid a mint, mate. Yeah, and with more to come, don't forget. I'm not getting a cent from you, am I? Yeah, well, I'm Johnny's agent, making sure he gets value for money. And I do think he should be on puddings. What do you fancy, Johnny? Well, I'm very fond of gooseberry tart, but I like vanilla. And I'm very partial to a bit of Lancashire cheese. They are, Stan. Nothing too wild about that, is there? Put it on your shopping list. If it, Johnny. Go for a pint? Yeah, I think so. And then we'll come back and have a couple of hours kip. Good idea. You're not working again? We did ask Stan this morning. The early bird not only catches the worm, Stan, he gets the hours in, I know. What are you doing this afternoon? Apart from shopping and washing up, that is. The rest of the wind around, aren't they? Yeah, well, if you come back uh, to fill your buckets or anything, be as quiet as you can, will you? And don't forget my gooseberry tart. You know what you two can do, don't you? What? Always bearing in mind the five blue ones in Johnny's pocket. A man can be pushed just so far. Do you know, I don't remember John Wayne saying that to you, Johnny. No, no, no. I think it is said, a man has his pride. Which is a much different thing, Stanley. Come on, let's mosey down the old saloon. <laughs> Oh, you're having another one, Len. Go on. No, Go he's not. I haven't been in here an hour. Isn't that right, Fred? Ooh, less. Ooh, you're both a couple of liars. So I'll ask a gentleman. Ken, how long has he been in here? Um, half an hour at the most. <sighs> Talk about sticking together. Fellas, you're like a bag of humbugs. Well, that's the only way we can survive in this feminist world. Well, if this is a feminist world, I'm a kangaroo. Right, I'll have another and all. And Mavis can play at being boss a bit longer. <laughs> I've done my work today, you know. I made a very good job of Emily's door. It's a work of art. You're supposed to make a very good job of things. Oh, I see. Yeah. Here's a couple of pints, will you, Fred? <laughs> hey, what are you and Oggy got cooking down there? He denies it, but I reckon you've got a couple of birds stashed away somewhere. You've got a very suspicious and a dirty <laughs> mind, as my colleague here will confirm. We're an oil male household. We've even stopped papers with news in. Oh, that'll be the day. True enough. Listen. Johnny has just had a very nasty experience with women. Isn't that right, Johnny? All right. Yeah, well, the wife shut me out. Well, she made it so I had to leave with the blokes. So I'm off women forever. Aye. Oh, well, I'm the same, mate, only the thing is they, uh, they won't leave me alone, see? <laughs> right. Thanks, Fred. There you go. Thank Fancy you. himself, does he? He's a bit of a lad. 
Yeah, that's all he does. Fancy himself. Got it in the bottle somehow. I'd like a word with you, if you don't mind, Mr. Fairclough. Hey? I've just brought Emily back from the hospital. Why, oh, what's the matter? She's cut her hand very badly. She's had six stitches in it. Six stitches now? Well, what's that got to do with Len? Well, you see, Mrs. Fairclough, she cut it on the new door. Or rather, the glass. The new door? Yes. It doesn't fit properly. It sticks. She tried to close it and her hand went right through the glass panel. Now, what have you to say to that, Mr. Fairclough? Well, I'm, I'm very sorry, naturally. Oh, and me too. Poor old Emily. Oh, you're very sorry, are you? Well, I'm very angry. Bloody angry, in fact. You come to my place this morning half an hour late, delaying me. You do a sloppy, slovenly job, and my wife suffers a severe injury as a direct cause of it. I'm seriously considering suing you for damages, Mr. Fairclough. That's how angry I am. Now, and as for those other jobs you're going to do for me, you forget them. I wouldn't employ you in my house again for a king's ransom. I don't employ incompetent workmen, Mr. Fairclough. And you're definitely incompetent. Now, perhaps if you spent less time in this pub, you might be capable of doing a better job. The other side of Mr. Swain, obviously. I did a good job on that door, I swear it. What if Mr. Fairclough comes back? Oh, he never comes back at night. Why haven't you got a key for the office? Because he hasn't given me one. Anyway, it's better than walking around, isn't it? Yeah. We can sit over here. Where's that come from? Uh, Mr. Fairclough's doing it up for some bloke. He'll never finish it, though. Come and sit down. You feel daft. Ah, uh, it's just like walking in the park. We might as well be there. Yeah, well, we're by ourselves here. Has your grand said anything else? I've not seen her since this morning. Why? I've just kept out of her way, you know. I didn't think she was like that. You know, like me dad. They're all the same, aren't they? Think they know best. I mean, man was the same. Yeah. Still, it's nice in here. A bit cold. Yeah. Is that better? A bit. If somebody walked in now, I wonder what they'd think, us two sat here. I don't care what they think. Supposing me dad walked in? Yeah. His eyes would probably pop out and he'd start foaming at the mouth. <laughs> he'd have a fit. I like it here, though. It's definitely one of my better ideas. Ooh, clever clogs. Martin? I love you. Oh, well, it must have been very painful, Emily. Well, it throbbed a bit afterwards, but it's all right now. Well, you're very lucky, you know. If you'd cut an artery or something and being on your own in the house, you could easily have bled to death. Yes. Rita told me about Arnold going into the Rovers. Did she? She said he was very annoyed with Mr. Fairclough. Yes. Yes. She said he was like a different man, Arnold. She said she could hardly believe it was him. Calling Mr. Fairclough incompetent, threatening to sue him. He was upset, Mavis. Mrs. Walker said the same. A different man. I'd been hurt, Mavis. He'd just been to the hospital with me. It's funny, isn't it, though, I have... You think you're better in yourself, improving yourself. And all the time, all you succeed in doing is making trouble for yourself. Well, it's one thing to be said for the status quo. It's safer. I don't follow. Well, if you hadn't been doing this house up to sell, this wouldn't have happened, would it? It's rather a flimsy connection, Mavis. Do you want to leave, Emily? Yes, of course I do, if Arnold does. But do you want to leave for yourself? Yes. Oh, here's Arnold now. Oh, I'd better be going. I've got one or two things to do. He's not going to eat you, Mavis. Oh, well, hello, Mavis. Keeping the invalid company. Oh, I'm not an invalid, Arnold. I've got to be off. Bye, Emily. Oh, bye, Arnold. Bye, Mavis, and thanks for coming. Haven't scared her away, have I? Not very difficult with Mavis. How's the hand? Oh, a lot better. The <clears throat> throbbing's eased off. I nearly told Mavis that your temper had eased off too, knowing she'll report straight back to Rita. And then, well, 
Perhaps we can sort things out amicably. Well, my temper's certainly cooled off, uh, Emily, but my determination is as strong as ever. Determination? Never to employ Fairclough again. And not to pay him for that door, I'm certainly not going to do that. Would you like me to get the tea? Would you? Another 50p you owe me, Eddie, lad? You know, for a fellow that reckons he can't play darts, them darts have a funny habit of going in the right places. Just beginner's luck, you know, mate. Yeah. 501 again. No, no, I'm sorry. I've got to see this fella, you see. He's been counting how many callers the wife's been having. Possible divorce proceedings, you know. Well, are they going to give me a chance to get my money back? No, no, some other time, eh, mate? See ya. <laughs> you ain't taking for a mug, haven't you? A hey. mug. Hey? He had a good dart play, you can tell the way he stands. That's how he wins his ale, you know, beats you and floats. A good mate. You could have just been lucky. You've been taken for a mug, a flipping mug. Yeah, all right, send you yourself. Same as you've been doing all day with me. Something funny about that fella, you know. He wants watching, I think. Rubbish. He's a gent, is Johnny. Hmm. There we are, matey. One of my best. Ah, oh. where's uh, Umpty and Dumpty tonight, then? Eh? Oh, no, they're back home. All oh, right. Stepping out on your own, are you? That's right, yeah. I don't blame you. The eight and can be a bit of an embarrassment in certain circumstances. Know what I mean? Hey, I say. If you two are on the two, Mrs. Walker will have you through that door in a jack sniff. For God's sake, I haven't been warned. We only came in here for a quiet drink. Hey, I know that bloke. Oh, him there. There's a mate at Yates's. He's stopping at Oggy's. Um, Johnny, Johnny, something or other. Johnny, Johnny Webb? Maureen Webb's husband. Uh, What's he doing lodging at Oggy's? Well, his missus has been spreading her favour, so he's walked out. Anyway, listen, you two, don't try picking anybody up. Don't say you haven't been warned. As if you could, like. <laughs> I'll have you in court if you're not careful, Fred G. Oh, it's a lot of baloney, that. What is? Maureen Webb spreading her favours. It's him spreading his more like. Last I heard, she chucked him out because they were dead thick. You know where that manager is at Dry Cleaners? That one on Bright Street. Mm. He'll get some treatment from Hilda Ogden and all when she gets back, that's for sure. <laughs> well, what have I said that's funny? Well, just supposing Maureen Webb doesn't know where he is. Well, maybe she don't. And supposing, I mean, just supposing, we tell her that he's living with his fancy woman. No, oh, you wouldn't. Well, have you forgotten what she did with our pools going? Cos I haven't. Hey, that's a full catamount pigeons, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> so true. Hello, Johnny Law. How do you, love? Mm. Clear the decks out, have you? Get in there, slowly. <clears throat> There's something about stale ale first thing in the morning makes you tea total till lunchtime. <coughs> morning. 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 That's Stanley John, does that's it? That's an old piggy sleepwalking myself. I'm as awake as you are. You going off jogging, are you, Stan? No. <coughs> Listen, why don't you give your uh, body to Manchester Kirby? Hey. Well, with what's in your lungs, you could resurface the Mancunian way. <laughs> I'm gasping for a cup of tea. I'll inform the chef. Oi, Chef! What? Fellow in here gasping for a cup of tea. Tell it, what a memento. Well, it's mashed. Por favor. Hey, you'll give us a lift to tidy this place up, won't you? If I only find it like this, you'll skin me. No time, Stan, no time. I mean, me and Johnny don't get up at this time in the morning to listen to the birds singing, you know. She won't like that either. What? Him, here. She'd like the money, though, won't she? Oh, aye. Right. Well, they are. Just before she hits you on the head, tell her to count up to 25, cos that's how many quids he's putting in. And your cooks as well. Hey, up. Now then, can I do bacon or can I do bacon? <laughs> Talk, Ram. One down and 47 to go. Eh? I've half the transport in general to feed after you. Hey, uh... hey where did you get to last night? Pictures. Uh-huh. Yeah. You notice I'm not asking you you weren't with? What you mean is you don't mind so long as it wasn't Karen. Oh, look, and I don't need you to put words in my mouth, my lad. True, though, isn't it? Look, I like Karen. She's a nice girl, but her dad is a... Yeah, I know, I know. Look, he's not only a dad, he's a copper. 
Look, look, there's plenty of other fish in the sea. I know you don't think so at this moment, but you'll realise different later on. See you at tea time. What are you rushing off to? Oh, Len said we got an early start. Oh, aye. Len's idea of an early start, not other people's idea of an early start. Anyway, I'd rather be out there in the cold than in here listening to Terry Wogan. Oh, well, you know why, don't you? No. The government puts on Terry Wogan, get people up early and out to work in the morning. <laughs> See ya. with you can't you sleep i thought i was banking on you being here the phone's been ringing for long yeah yeah i would have answered it only i haven't got a key no yeah. <laughs> might have been a big job on you know might have been something important i doubt it oh yeah but you never know i better give you a key then don't i otherwise you might be tempted to stick your fist through the glass it's getting very popular that now try that for size i'm just getting on with the odds and sods this morning get the top and take any jobs out of the way yeah it's right Ah, well, you hang on to that, then. Oh, thank you. Let's have a look. We've got Mrs. Dawson's bog, we've got Len Turner's taps, and the overflow at the laundrette. Mr. Swain's door. The what? Mr. Swain's door. Mr. Swain's already got a door. I know. Repairing it. We're not going to do any repairs until he's paid us what he owes us. Oh. Look, I told Emily, didn't I, that when you hang a new door, it sometimes has a habit of dropping, so you've got to chop a bit off the bottom. Yeah. It's not my fault she put her fist through the glasses in. All right, come on, let's get on with Mrs. Dawson's bog. Right. Hmm, time I wasn't here. I was thinking, you know, if you ever want any help at the shop... Hmm? I mean, oh. I could... I could perhaps give Flora a break. I've spent a fair amount of my life behind the counter, you know. That's not a hint, is it? A hint? Yes, that you're beginning to get fed up about looking after the house. Oh, no, no, of course not. I only meant now and mm. again. Well, there's plenty to do. Only seven new babies last week. <laughs> All want to be looked after. To say nothing of Amanda the parrot? Yes, well, nothing is the best thing that can be said about her at the moment. I almost got shot of her yesterday. This woman had almost bought her when the stupid bird answered her back rather offensively. Oh, you wouldn't sell Amanda, would not, you? Not unless I'm very lucky. <laughs> Door. Yes, British workmanship. You know, we'll have doors coming from Hong Kong before long, if this is anything to go by. Oh, well, to be fair, he did sort of warn us. Yes, well, there should have been no need for a warning. Anyway, I don't want you to worry about it. That's between Len Fairclough and me. Right. Bye. 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 Is this it, then? Yeah, this is it. Spent the best years of my life here. Well, here in Her Majesty's do that, you know. Uh, anyway, I was telling one of them. Oh, are yeah. You see, she works in this club. She's got a flat that goes with a job, you know. It's very handy. Oh, you've got to be joking. Best thing that's ever happened to me, Sandra. Well, best thing this year, you know what I mean. Hang on, hang on. I thought it was your missus that was playing the field. Did I say that? You know, I'm beginning to think you're a liar and a fraud, John Michael Webb. I think you're only paying Stan that 25 quid to keep in hiding from your missus. You know what, Edward? You might have a point there. Yeah, I might, I know, I might not. Well, she'd have me back if I wanted to, but uh, not all in one piece, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, well. Oh. How do, Chief? This I've got to see. Eddie Yates in action. <laughs> you can see why I left, can't you? Poor management shop floor relations. Did he tell you he left? Show me out of this place. Single-handed. Single-handed? Yeah. Oh, well, of course, he's dead right there, isn't he? You only ever use one hand. Oh, yeah, go on, have your little joke, but you'd be surprised at the transfer fee, the cop, you're asking for my return here. No chance. Come on, we're going to have to get the last bus home to catch that truck if we don't get our skates on. Hey, is that all he does? He opens the door for you? I'll tell you what, Squire, it's not as easy as it looks, you know. Some of these doors have a nasty habit of sticking, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> on your way! What are you laughing at? Nothing. <coughs> In here. Oh, you're back. Oh, yeah. I'm glad to be and all. Have you missed me, Chuck? Oh, I. Ah. 
Everybody all right? Oh, yeah, grand, grand. Good. Do you know, you wouldn't credit how much them children have grown. <laughs> You're not working today, then? This afternoon. You see, I wanted to be here when you got back. Oh. Oh, yeah, of course you did, Chuck. I wasn't thinking. You'd <laughs> like a cup of tea, would you? Are you going to make me one? Oh, yeah. Ah. Well, you've been managing all right, have you? I mean, looking after Eddie, you know. Oh, I think it's been all right. I've had uh, Eddie's mate to, to keep me company, you know. Hey! Yes? Just get yourself back in here a minute. Well, I'm making the... What mate of Eddie's? Palavin's Johnny. Nice fellow, you'll like him. Stanley? Yes? Yeah. Do you know what I've been thinking all the way here in the bus? No. Well, I've been thinking, what will I find when I get home? Will it be chickens or donkeys or what'll it be? Ah, but there's... And I thought to myself, whatever it is, I will not shout at Stanley. I made a revolution like that whatever it was you'd done, and I knew there'd be somewhat, well, there had to be somewhat, hadn't there? I made a revolution that I would not shout. I'd do like Annie Walker does and stay nice and quiet. Yeah. Only I'm not sure how long I can keep it up, so if you're out to tell me, you'd best be quick about it. Well, it's a mate of Eddie's staying here, is he? A woman? No, 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 a fella. Oh. On the run, is he? Nipped over the walls from strange ways and made a beeline for here? No, he's a, a bin man. Oh, well, I knew he'd been out in a suit. Paying 25 quid a week. 25? Yeah. Oh. And uh, where's he supposed to be sleeping, this mate of Eddie's? Uh, Eddie's room. I managed to get an old bed, you know. Hmm. How long's he here for? Well, a week, more or less. Look, let me go and make the tea, and then we can nip down rows together, see if he's there, and you can give him the once over. Huh? Do you know how Trevor was saying? It's nice when you can leave me, Dad, and not have no qualms about him seeing to himself. Yeah. I said, qualms? I said, one of these days, I'm going to get back and find he sold the house to the Hells Angels. And the first I'll know about it will be when I trip over a motorbike in the lobby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on, let's have this cup of tea, then. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Two glasses of lager, kid. Oh, this one of them weeks you've missed, then, is it? <laughs> missed what? Coming up on pools. Oh, oh don't remind us. I mean, most Mondays it's champagne, isn't it? You know, barmaids are supposed to be all sympathetic, aren't they? Yeah. But why is it we always get other sort? <laughs> oh, like I said to our Martin, there's plenty more fish in the sea. That's good, coming from you. Yeah, I don't think he believed me much at the time. So I didn't stress the point that as you get older, it gets harder. Well, I'm surprised that you've been a spoil sport, though. Oh, it's not just that. It was and the fact of her father being a cop, you know. It's that business about Alf selling them drink and everything. And you were frightened that Martin might live up to the family name or spoil it? Well, no, live up to it was the thing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, how long have you two been in here? Ten minutes, and I'm very sorry if you're paying. I'll have a vodka in there. What about you, darling? No, thanks, love. I've got the boss holding the force, so I'd better right. go see you, kid. That's Draw. a pint for me, darling, and uh, vodka in there. Pint and a vodka and tonic. Are we dining out, sweetheart? Yeah, if you don't mind, love. If they got any pies left. Where's your little friend? Martin? Yeah. He's back in the yard. You locked him in? Why? Well, Elsie was just telling me, yeah. apparently there's this police sergeant's daughter who, if Martin so much as Luke's at again, they're going to get the special patrol group after him. Yeah. Oh, all right. Did you say so, Matt? No. Funny that. It must be plumbing in these old buildings this summer. Oh, come on. <laughs> Still playing them games, are we? All right, so long as we know. But don't think I'm worried because you lost me my job. I've plenty coming in now, what with one thing and another, so you can clean up your own mess of a night, see if I care. Well, that does it, kid. You know what I was saying the other day about spilling beans some more and when about where your husband's hanging out? Well, that does it. Okay. Are you coming? What, you mean, you're going to let her on that Hilda Ogden's his fancy woman? Well, it's up to Maureen, isn't it, what she thinks. Hey, ten to one, she'll be in flying horse. If we go now, can we be there and back before Baldwin starts shouting, kid? Bit of a dirty trick, though, isn't it? Well, it's not as bad as one she pulled on us with that pulse coat. And she's cheats to come in here, flouncing in here, bragging about what brass she's got. Yeah, but you don't want to. Well, I'll go by myself, then. If you don't want to go, I'll go by myself. That's 63 to you, Stanley. Uh, All right, uh, Chuck. On me, these seniors have just come home. Yeah. One for yourself, that love. You haven't bought one of them little printing sets, have you, Hilda? 
Oh, no, well, when you've got a bit, you don't mind spending it, do you? See what Len and Rita wants while you're at it. Uh, no, we're all right, thank you, Hilda. Well, cheers, Hilda. Cheers. Nice to be back among friends. <laughs> Not that I'm not made welcome at our Travers, you know, but, uh, well, there's somewhat about your own home, isn't there? There's nowhere like it. Martin? Hi. There's nobody else here, is there? No, come on in. Centre of the Fairclough Plumbing Empire, this, you know. Oh, and here's me thinking it's just a dirty old office. Oh. And guess what this is? Thing for taking stones out of horses' hoofs. It's a key. I know it's a key, Martin. I can see that. Yeah, well, it's the key to this office, isn't it? He gave it me this morning means we can come in here. Oh. Brilliant, isn't it? Anyhow, do you want one of these? Oh, Tom. We both corned beef, it's all we had. That's all right, I like corned beef. Has uh, your grand said anything else? You know about not seeing me? Yeah. I don't think she's that bothered, really, but what well, she thinks she has to pretend to be. I mean, you know what they're like. Yeah. Do you want a cup of tea? Best china, is it? Hardly. Mr. Fairclough's mug. Oh, well, perhaps you better not, Martin. Oh, he won't mind. <laughs> he won't know. Oh, I know what I meant to tell you. What? I meant to tell you last night, but I forgot. Well, go on, tell us. I'm going to have my ears pierced. You what? Yeah, I've made an appointment for after work. Oh, can I come along with you? Yeah, if you want. Six o'clock I've got to be there. All right, we'll meet back here, shall we? it will have gone by then. OK. You, uh, going to have yours done then? Yeah. Yeah, why not? Came back to us, don't they? Oh, yeah, I did that. Do you know, you're a sight for sore eyes, Mrs O. Ah. Well, it's just that when you get used to your cooking and have to do without it, you get withdrawal symptoms, you know. Oh, well, I'll do something special for tonight, shall I? Oh, great. And, uh, as Stan mentioned... Ah, I'd uh, mention it to her, yeah. And you don't mind? Well, if I'm catering for you two oversized articles, I don't think I can go wrong with one more. Oh, great. <laughs> this is... Uh, oh, this is your friend, Yeah, is this it? is Johnny. Hello, Mrs O. It's a pleasure to meet you. And if only half of what Eddie says about you is true, you're a landlady in a million. Oh, he's a flatterer, this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's get a drink. Oh. Right, two pints, please, darling. And Mrs. Hall. Well, there, uh, pork and lemon would be very nice, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, what about you, Stanley? Oh, you I can uh, manage one, yeah. Hello. Well, I mean, it's not if Arnold's keeping quiet about it, is it? From what Mavis said, he's been shouting his mouth off about how he's not going to pay you. He's going to teach you a lesson. That's the first time somebody said that. It's the first time they've lived three doors away. I know, that's what makes it so flaming awkward. Anyway, he's not paying up. Till I repair the damage. The damage that Emily did. All right, all right, just let me sort it out, OK? Well, I know what you'd be saying if it were 80 quid he owed the cabin. He'd have me stood outside his door with a sign round my neck saying Arnold Swain doesn't pay his debts. Hey, you know, if everything else fails, I wouldn't mind trying, huh? No, oh, I've Hey, I fixed it, kid. I've got Maureen Webb on wall. I've seen her. Oh, in fly nose, like I said. Oh, she were dead keen on. Keep your voice down. He's over there. Oh, her husband, do you? Why, oh, come on. Hey, there'll be a blood that's an art, no day. And you come on. <laughs> More like lions. <laughs> no, it's sticking. Oh, oh, Len, come in. Do come in. Dash. Uh, and I'm sorry, when I said about the door sticking, I didn't know it was you. I'm sure you didn't, love. I'm sure you didn't. Arnold's not in, then? Uh, he's at the shop. How's the hand? Oh, it's all right. It did. It, uh, it never was very much. Good. It is about the door. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you can't really ignore it, can you? It worries me every time I go past. Yes. Now, Emily, look, I, I did tell you, didn't I? That sometimes when you hang a new door, it drops a bit. Yes. And then afterwards, you've got to shave a bit off the bottom. Yes. And I said I'd come round and fix it. 
If I hadn't been so silly as to break the glass, none of this would have arisen. Well, I can fix it for you. Easily. I mean, with pleasure. So long as your husband stops going round saying he won't pay me. I think Arnold sees it as a matter of principle as much as anything. Well, what the hell is he going to do then? I mean, he can't leave it like that. <laughs> In a couple of weeks, you'll be prizing it open with a crowbar. No. Well, I can fix it for you by tomorrow dinner time. Well, I'll tell Arnold what you said, but he does seem to have dug his heels in. Well, he knows where to find me, doesn't he? I mean, life's short enough without falling out with your neighbours. Oh, it's the last thing I want. I'd better go, wouldn't I? It might take me half an hour to get out of here. <laughs> what time's shower, eh? Any idea? Oh, I don't know. Just a minute of town, all right? Yeah. But if this is all starts, lay the table, tell the deal me in. We're back about six. Yeah, all right. Hey, how was Stanley sit out cleaning his windows? I suppose so. He doesn't usually start till people are coming home. Oh, tell you what, though, I bet she's a bit of a terrier, that misses away. Oh, I bet she doesn't half lead him a dance. Well, you know what they say. <laughs> Behind every working man, there's a woman ready to brain him if he stops. Oh, blimey, <laughs> don't remind me. Well, you are all right. You've cracked it, haven't you? You've got nothing to worry about. Only so long as I cover me tracks. See you later, kid. Will do. You and me against the world. Sometimes it feels like you and me. Like greyhounds out of a trap. Oh, it's there. Uh... You'll get yourself sat down there, kid. And can we have two glasses of lager back, please? You most certainly can, if I can just find time from serving all these other folk. Oh. Look, I can't have an idea all night. Oh, shut up, arguing. I'm not, I've got teeth to see, Tom. Look, five minutes, that's all it'll take. Yeah, but you don't know. Because she said, didn't she? Oh, you should have seen me in that flying horse, kid. Oh, I were good. I were casual, I were smashing. Why? Well, I just happened to mention, like, that I'd seen her husband down Coronation Street, and straight off, she wants to know which house. Oh, I said, I'm not sure. I said, I think it's number 13. And is it? What? Number 13. Of course it is. Well, I won't know. Hey, so then she wants to know, did I not name a woman that he'd shacked up with? And you said Hilda Ogden. Well, I just happened to say that I thought Hilda Ogden lived there. It's not to do with me any wrong. Hey, I'm not kidding, though. She was blazing mad. I thought she'd have come round there and then, but she said she had to get back to work. But she says, come out past five, she'll be not to stop me then. It's 54, plus service charge, 54. It's our pet. Keeping out at crush down here, are you? No, it's her. She wants to sit near the door. In case of fire, fresh air, or what? Hey, hang a bell. There's no happening yet. <coughs> Look, I can't stop above ten minutes. Are you expecting Prince Charles visiting a summer? Oh, it's a lot better than that, kid. <laughs> One of her daft ideas. Well, I'm all for daft ideas. Give us a shout if there's out worth seeing, won't you? <laughs> Come on in. Yeah, yeah. He was sacked him, actually. Oh, did you now? Why? What's he done? Well, he was late back from his dinner. And, you know, I just won't put up with that. I warned the lad yesterday. <laughs> but you know what these kids are like? They don't take a blind bit of notice. Excuse me. Chavesky, Chavesky and Chavesky. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fit that in tomorrow, no problem. BP. They want me to change the washers on 2,000 miles of piping under the North Sea. <laughs> you daft thing. <laughs> you still going to have them done? Yeah, one. What? Yeah, well, I thought I'd have just the one done, you know. Have you thought about what your gran'll say? What about? You were not nearing. Oh, I don't think she'll say anything. Well, what about Mr Fairclough and what you, see you said about him? Don't you believe me? What? I told you. I've sacked him, given him his cards. <laughs> Listen, hang on here a minute. I'm just going to do a bit of tidying up. OK. Oh, Mr Hold your horses.
for you. Uh, it's it's Mrs Ogden I'm after. Hilda? Well, there's a matter of Hilda, taxes. yeah. Yeah, well, she's out. She's shopping in town. Oh. Hey! Look, yeah. Uh, do you want to come in and wait for her, like? Yeah. Uh, are you her husband? Me? <laughs> no, I'm just a friend. I'll come in, then. <laughs> come through here. Here we are. Sit down, make yourself at home. Yeah, well, uh, she won't be long. Are you a friend of Mrs Ogden's, are you? I wouldn't have said so, no. Ah. The name's Webb. Mrs Webb. Oh. I don't know if that means all to you, but I'm sure it will to Mrs Hilda Ogden when she finally gets here. Be long. You look great, honest. Well, I hope so. I had a mate at school had his ear pierced. See, everybody does it. Yeah, but he uh, wore a safety pin in his. He didn't. Yeah, he had one through his nose and all. Oh, I think that's awful, that. I mean, you can go too far, can't you? Would you ever have your hair dyed green? You what? Or blue or something. I had another mate had his hair striped like a tiger's. <laughs> you had some funny mates. <laughs> Headmaster sent him home. Yeah, I had this like that. They're all the same, aren't they? Yeah. Right, you ready? Yeah. I'll just lock up with this new key that's been entrusted in me. You're clever, aren't you? How'd you guess? Bravo. 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 Well, I can't hear anything yet. Don't you worry, you will. Well, I still think it's a bit of a dirty trick. Why? It's not as bad as one sheep holding us with that pole's Colton. Oh, stop sympathising with her. She don't deserve it. Well, I'm not. I just can't help wondering if it's going to work. I mean, be honest, if somebody told you your Jack were hanging around with Hilda Ogden, <laughs> would you believe him? Oh, well, for a start, our Jack's not Johnny Webb. And I'm not Johnny Webb's missus. That's tell you something else she hasn't seen Hilda yet, has she? No, but she'll have to if they're going to have a row. Well, if it's all late with them, won't it? She'll be raring for a bust up. I mean, look at facts. She thinks her husband's living with his bits of stuff. Because we happen to mention they were living at Hilda's. She goes round to Hilda's and bingo. I thought you said she were coming at half past five. She is. Well, it's gone, that, and not happening yet. We'll happen Hilda in. Perhaps she's waiting for her. Don't worry, we'll soon know when Hilda gets back. For a start, we'll have shot waves, <laughs> and them glasses will start to rattle. <laughs> <laughs> What have you got that daft look on your face for? What daft look? Wear it all the time, do you? Look, I'm just worried for you, that's all. I don't think there's any sense in hanging round. Don't worry about me. I've got all the time in the world. Oh, great. So, you're Eddie Yates? Yeah, I'm Eddie Yates. Clint Eastwood of Coronation Street. <laughs> According to Johnny, you're a right villain. In and out of jail all the time, from what I hear. That's all behind me, if you don't mind me saying so. Oh, I'm pleased to hear it. And uh, you lodge here, you say? Yes, I lodge here. With Johnny? Look, Johnny doesn't live here. Doesn't he? I've had it on very good authority. He's living here at this very moment. Yeah, well, your informant must have been misinformed. He wanted to stay here, but the Oggies wouldn't have him. They reckon they had enough with me. Where is he, then? Well, I thought he'd come back to you. He said he couldn't stand being without you any longer. He said it was a silly lover's tiff and he was going right round there to make it up to you. Johnny said that? Yeah, cross me out. Your heart's on the other side. Yeah, well, I never was any good at science. Mm, you're a liar. Me? I'd like to know more about this Mrs Ogden. What about her? Well, what's she like? Well, Hilda's Hilda, isn't she? What? Is she flighty? Uh, a bit on the fancy side? Hilda, a bit on the fancy side. Oh, you know what I mean. Attractive. Attractive? <laughs> Only on a wet November night, and then you'd have to have your glasses steamed up. <laughs> well, she must have something going for her. You don't... <laughs> Don't think 
God, he's been having a fling with Hilda, do you? Well, he's been having one with somebody. <laughs> yeah, but not Hilda. I mean, even the dogs cross the road when they see her coming. <laughs> anyway, she's happily married. Look. <laughs> Look, that's Stan, her husband, and that's Hilda. And even that's caught her on a good day. There's no between them, then, him and this Mrs Ogden. Look, would Margaret Thatcher run off without the Scargill? And he's never lived here? Never. Then what are his shoes doing down by the sofa? Hey. Ah. I'll wait. And I don't care how long she is. Oh, it's only me. <clears throat> oh, dear. Are you early or am I late? Oh, uh, perhaps I'm a little early. Mmm, something smells nice. Could it be me? Oh, you always smell nice. No, I was thinking of the aroma emanating from that kitchen. Just a simple casserole. Lovely. And the kettle's boiling, so make yourself comfy. I'll bring you a cup of tea. Ah. <clears throat> you know, Em, at moments like these, the joys of marriage become very apparent. Very pleased to hear it. How's your day been? Oh, quite busy. Everything takes twice as long with this hand. Yes, well, it would, wouldn't it? I, uh, bumped into Len this afternoon. Oh, did you indeed? He mentioned the door. Well, he no right to. I don't want him bothering you with this business. Arnold, do you think we're being unreasonable? Look, I've made my position quite clear, Emily. There's no defence for shoddy workmanship, and that injury of yours could be much worse than it is. Well, I just hate the thought of any bad feeling. They are neighbours. Emily, neighbours or not, the principal remains. Len Fairclough is not being paid until he's repaired that door. Now, it's as simple as that. Well, I know Len of old, Arnold. He can be very stubborn. And so can I, Emily. Especially when I'm in the right. Look, do I look like the sort of person that tells lies? I'm as honest as the day's long. You've been telling me lies ever since I walked into this room. Hilda hasn't even been here for the last few weeks. She's been at Dirt Severs in Chesterfield. Oh, yeah. Look, if Johnny's having a fling with Hilda, what am I doing living here? How do I know you live here? Of course I live here. I've got my own room, my own little bed, haven't I? That's what you say. All right, how do you explain, Stan? Look, there he is, Stan, in the photo with Hilda. Now, how would you explain that? Well, for all I know, he could be dead. Oh, you've got a vivid imagination you have. Oh, working away. He could be working away. He's a flaming window cleaner. How can he be working away if he's a flaming window cleaner? I'll tell you what I think the truth of it is. I don't think she's married. I don't think that's her photo. And I don't think you live here. I give up. I do, honest. I give up. Oh, love. Put the kettle on, will you? I've just had a drink and it's given me a raging thirst. Hello, oh, Grant. Come on, get a move on. You're ten years younger than I am. And the rest. All right, I'll give you 15, but still put the kettle on. Martin, will you start fidgeting? Oh, come and sit down. You're making me nervous. <clears throat> Is there something wrong? No. Is there something wrong with your ear? No. Well, why do you keep covering it up, then? Who's covering it up? Martin, what are you up to? Nothing. Now, look, you. I haven't brought up two kids all this time not to have developed a sixth sense. You're jigging about like a corpse late for its own funeral. Let's have a look at your ear. I've had it pierced. Oh, have no help us. Do you like it? Well, why didn't you tell me before you had it done? I only decided today. Just today? Yeah. Just like that? Yeah. Why all the rush? I just fancied it. You just fancied it? Yeah. All of a sudden? Yeah. So you got out of bed this morning, looked at the weather and thought, oh, what a lovely day for having me ear pierced. Who do you think you are, Ken Dodd? Look, 
she could be ours yet. She could have gone straight to pictures or to the bingo or to the... Oh, the Hallie or to the... Right. You can tell her when she comes in that I know what's going on between her and my husband and I'll be back and I'll keep on coming back till I cop her. I will. I will. I'll give it a full blow-by-blow blow account. Hello, Mrs O. <laughs> can I carry your bag? Oh, very kind of you, I'm sure. Oh, just finished work, have you? Oh, no, well, I've uh, just been to see a friend, you know. Oh, very nice, too. All need friends, don't we? We do, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll see you again. Well, if I see you first, you won't. Come here, you! Bloody hell, fire! Oh. Hey! What's going on? Mrs Ogden, I take it. I don't think I've had the pleasure. No, but my husband has. Maureen Webb. Mrs Maureen Webb. That fella who was so kindly carrying your bag just now happens to be my husband. What, him? Johnny? Yeah, Johnny. Him has run off like a scolded cat. And I'm surprised you've got the nerve to stand there as cool as you please and all. Well, why shouldn't I? I live here. You're not the only one, neither. You've been giving bed and board to my husband. So what? You didn't want him. Oh, you cheeky devil. If you'd wanted him back, you shouldn't have drove him away in the first place. Drove him away? Who oh, drove him away? It was you as lured him. Me as what? Don't worry, I know your sort. You can't get husband of your own, so you have to pinch somebody else's. <laughs> oh, laugh all you like, madam. I don't find it funny. Look, I'll have you know I'm a happily married woman. Well, they'll tell you. Go on, tell her. Well, she's definitely married, love. I won't go no further than that, but she's definitely married. That makes it worse, that. You just keep away from my husband. Well, I wouldn't touch him with a ten-foot pole. I tried to tell her, Hilda. I did You'd try better to tell not, her. neither. I'm listening to you. I reckon it's him what's hard done by, having to live with a big mouth like you. I could take you to court for talking like that. You couldn't take nobody nowhere cos you haven't got the brains you was born with. You're nothing but a flipping big mouth. At least I'm not a common little hussy. Too, if your brain was as big as your mouth, you'd be a flipping genius. Right, that's it. I'm going to see a solicitor about you, innit? Right, you do. And while you're at it, you can tell him this. I wouldn't be seen dead with your husband. Hey, what's going on? Here's one that'll tell you the same. Now, this is my husband. Go on, tell him what you just told me. Go on, if you dare. What's up? Ask little madam here. Well, uh, I still don't understand why he ran off like that if he'd got not to hide. Well, you would if you wasn't so thick. It was to get away from you, and I don't blame him neither. Have I missed something? You could say that. I have a few things to sort out with you, Stanley. So get inside. What have I done this time? And you can off it and all. And don't let me see you round here again, else I'll have you for demarcation of character. He's been carrying on with someone, and I'm going to find out who. Yeah, well, don't jump in with your two big feet next time. Uh. Right, you two. Inside. I've got a few words to say to the pair of you. Go on. All in. right. Oh. <laughs> Cheers, Gib. Couldn't have been sweeter, that kid. No, except till they come out on top. Well, she would, won't she? She's an ardent campaigner. <laughs> Still, others will give her an hard time, well, won't they? Well, matches go, I've heard better. You know, I think I'd rather have me hundred thousand pound. Oh, wouldn't we all, kid? Still, we've evened it out a bit, haven't we? Don't tell me you're still on that game. Listen, it'll be a long time before we forget what she did to us. Bye, heck, I wouldn't like to cross you two. Thought it were elephants that never forgot. Hey, do you think she'll put two and two together? Oh, well, dear. She can only count up to three. <laughs> <laughs> two pints and a bottle of life better. They all for you? No, Stan and Hilda are behind me. Do you hear that, Dumbo? Give you a hard time, this Hilda. You could say that. Hey, what were Johnny's missus doing round here in first place? Oh, she had some idea that Johnny was playing away from home with Hilda. Oh, very understandable. Yeah, well, I was cornered in number 13 like a rat in a sewer. I mean, she she was barmy, she just wouldn't listen to reason. I thought it was her that had fancy fellas. I thought that's why he left home. Well, that's what he told Hilda. But it turns out it wasn't her that had fancy fellas. It was him that had fancy women. Oh, same thing. 
thing. I'm surprised, Ilda, got stroppy over a little difference like that. Well, don't you start, Lynch. Me and Stan have already had our sins read out good and proper. Here we are, ready and waiting. You must be parched after all that shouting, Ilda. I'm parched for listening. Cheers, Ilda. You handled that like a good one. Get lost, you. You hey, what? <laughs> I've just spent five hours defending your honour. My honour doesn't need defending, thank you very much. Yeah, but she didn't know that, did she? Never mind, Hilda, you put a good show on. Better than out on telly last night. She had a flaming cheek. Funny you should say that. That's just what I thought. How do you mean exactly? Well, thinking you could be any man's fancy piece. What do you say, Stan? Oh, she wanted her head examined. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, well, I mean, you're not like that, are you? I mean, fancy women, they're <laughs> fancy, aren't they? Just shut up, Stan, while you're still breathing. None of this would have happened if you hadn't let him in to start with. Do you know, I still think somebody's been staring him. I mean, Johnny never told nobody he was living at number 13. Yeah, but who round here would do a thing like that? I mean, only the scum of society would pull a trick like that. Won't be girls. Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. <laughs> Broke any good doors recently? I'd rather not talk about that if you don't mind, Rita. Well, I wish I could say the same about Len. But the mere mention of your new husband's name sends him into a fit of rage, the likes of which I've not seen. Oh, dear. And I must say, I do sympathise with him. Honestly, I mean, don't you think your Arnold's been just a little unreasonable? Rita, I, I do feel we should leave it to the men to sort out, don't you? Well, I don't see what there is to sort out. I mean, were you or were you not warned that door would stick? Well... Oh, come on, Emily. Len did warn you, didn't he? Only... I don't see how you can blame him. I mean, he's laid out a lot of money for that door, you know. Yes, I know, but try and see Arnold's point of view, will you? What point of view's that, love? I don't see that he has one. I honestly don't feel he's got a leg to stand on. Do you? Are you sure it'll be OK? Yeah, you know no one comes back here at night. What if someone hears us? Look, no one's going to hear us. Stop worrying. I hate to be caught in here. We're not going to get caught. Come, we're going to the office. No one can see us in there. Come on, there's nothing to be frightened of. Hey. What? Give us a kiss. What did your grand say about your ear? Oh, she was stupid. Why? She was just taking the mickey, you know, all about your dad. He went bonkers. <laughs> did he? He told me I had to take him out. What did you say? Oh, I told him I can't. Yeah, my grand said the same thing. He makes me mad. I can't do anything without his say-so. Has he always been like that? Oh, he's always been strict. I mean, it's daft these days. I'm 16 and he treats me like a kid. Where does he think you are tonight? I told him I was at Sandra's. <laughs> He'd go spare if he knew I was here. Never let me leave home like you did. Well, it's not really leaving home, is it, me grands? Anyway, me mum and dad were just glad I got a job. Yeah, I know what you mean. Sandra hasn't worked since she left school. She's really sick. We're lucky, having jobs. Well, I'd hardly call it lucky working at Baldwin's. Oh, it's better than sitting at home all day, having me mum mithering me to bits. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to tell me that. Karen. What? Do you fancy a cup of coffee? Is there some? Yeah, look, I'll save some special. You see to the kettle, I'll see to the coffee. Right. You take sugar, don't you? Yeah, one. Here, Karen. What? Great this, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Hilda's having a clear out. What of? Johnny Webb stuff. Where's he sleeping tonight? I don't know and I don't care. Wish I hadn't listened to you. I'm a dead lumber through you. Oh, you were happy enough taking the money, weren't you? Couldn't get it out of his hands quick enough. I'd rather be skint than have it on his tack every five minutes of flaming day, wouldn't I? Every time I leave you on your own, you get up to some mischief or other. Every flaming time. It wasn't entirely my fault. Oh, no, it never is, is it? Blame it on the milkman, the postman, anybody but you. How was I to know I was staying in to meet his fancy woman? He knew, and if you asked me, he told you and all. <laughs> well, go on, won't open itself. <laughs> And you, make yourself useful. I was watching that. Well, I've got news for you. You've stopped. Now, go and tidy that pigsty you and Johnny Webb call a bedroom. What do you want? 
I've come for my things. Well, get them quietly and quickly, will you? Who is it, Stanley? Uh, just a minute. Hey, all my things aren't here. Oh, blimey. Who is it? Uh, it, it, it it's John, Johnny Webb. He's come for his things. Oh, is it? Yeah. Right. Right, you! Out! Hello, Mrs. O. Don't you, Mrs. O, me. Out! Yeah, but I've come for my things. Well, take them and get gone. Yeah, but all my things aren't here. I'll put the rest in the dustbin. You can collect them in the morning. Now, out! Oh. And I thought I told you to go and tidy that pigsty yours. Yeah, uh, just go on, Hilda. And as for you. Oh, don't start again, Hilda. I'll give you don't start again. I leave you in charge for five minutes and what happens? I'm sorry. Oh, there's folk in this street going to be laughing their socks off because of this, you know. And I hold you responsible, Stanley, as caretaker of this house while I was away. I said I'm sorry. And I won't forget you laughing when Bet Lynch suggested I couldn't be taken for nobody's fancy feast either. Oh, I'll not forget that in a hurry. Why can't you remember the good times? What good times? I'll go. Oh, thanks. Oh. Hello, Emily. Hello. Uh, can I come in? I would like a word. Yes, yes, of course. Oh. Mm. Well, I didn't expect to see you. Uh, no, well, I just think all this is getting a bit silly now, don't you? Yes, well, I think it's been very silly from the start, hasn't it? So let's try to sort something out, shall we? Nothing would suit me better. Good. Emily's had a word with you, has she? Yes, she said that you'd been pestering her, yeah. Oh, no, Arnold, be fair. I didn't say that. I just Look, said Look, I haven't come in here for any aggro. I just want a little chat, that's all. Look, I've made my position quite clear. And nothing has happened in the last 24 hours to make me change that position. Are you going to listen to me? I am listening. Well, listen to this, then. As a gesture of goodwill on my part, I'm willing to knock off five quid from the original estimate. How's that, then? Oh, well, I think that's very fair, don't you, Arnold? And why, precisely, are you willing to do that? I've just told it. A gesture of goodwill? Yeah. It's not simply an admission of guilt. No, it flaming isn't. Oh, five pounds seems very reasonable, Arnold. Yes, well, I'm sorry, Emily, but I think it's very unreasonable. Well, what do you want, blood? I can only reiterate what I've already said. Not a penny will be paid until that door is rehung and a new glass fitted. Right, then, listen to this. If that bill, my bill, isn't paid in full in the next two weeks, I'm coming back here reclaiming that door and ripping it off its flaming hinges. Now, how do you like that? Well, what would you say if your brand had his ears pierced? I think it'd suit him. People don't worry about fellas having their ears pierced these days. Well, you want to see what our Martin looks like? Go on, he's a nice lad. I'll have to go. Thanks for the chat on the magazine. Oh, don't thank me, love. Thank the hairdressers. They lent it to me, although they don't know it yet. But what can you do when you're in the middle of a story? There you are. That's it. Well, you're all doubt, that's it. Hey, what's up with you? I'm OK. Oh, come on. You're not OK. You're far from it. What's up? My mum rang. She wants to come and stay with us. Well, how can she? What, what's up? I don't know, but she sounded upset, and that's not like her. I think she'd been crying. Well... Hard luck, but how can she stay in a one-bedroom house? That's what I said. She said she'd sleep on the settee. I wonder what's up. I don't know. Ah. I wish I did. Well, suppose it'll be something and nothing. With my mum? You must be joking. Oh, oh come on, love. Have you seen me keys? No, I haven't. Hey, do you like this new chutney? Yes, all right. Oh, good, cos I don't. You can have it in all your sandwiches. Now, look, I came in with them, so I must have had them in the hand. You're going to spend half your life looking for things you've put down. I know I am. Have you looked in your overall pocket? Yeah, I did. You're going to be popular, borrowing the car and losing the keys. Yeah, it's only an old bang we knock around, isn't it? I thought you said you looked in your overall. The flame and dead. <laughs> well, there's your keys, there's your sandwiches, off you go. And don't forget, Cathy. What do you want me to tell her, love, her? Just tell her I won't be until this afternoon. Was I tell you you're uh, feeling sick, eh? No, you don't have to. She said it'd be OK if I wanted the odd morning off. Well, I'll tell your mum's coming then, eh? Just tell her I'll be in this afternoon. You know something, love? I'd love to know why your mum's coming. I don't know, do I? 
some upheaval. It's always some upheaval when your mum comes, well, isn't it? I can't tell her not to come. I can know I? that, love, but you can't encourage her either, can you? She knows it's awkward. She has been here. Aye. She caused ructions then, didn't she? She wouldn't ask if she didn't have to. All right, love. But tell her nicely, yeah? See you later. See ya. I've made a fresh pot. Oh, great. You know, one of these days, I'll find time to get me breakfast. You're not letting him starve to death, are you? Listen, if he wants to starve, it's up to him. I'm only the lodger, you know. Alf, mate, you have got it all right. You've got to get her trained. Oh, has he? Yeah, I mean, it's all right for your millionaire to have women around the place to decorate it, but until then, get them in the kitchen. Isn't it amazing? Neanderthal man is alive and well. He never went away. I can see. And you know what? Because that is what women are looking for. I mean, deep down inside, that is what they really want. Do you know something? By the time you're drawing your pension, you'll be on shore as a fossil. Have you never heard of women's lib? Women's lib? Cool, that'd be in the museum when I'm drawing my pension. It's just a flash in the pan. Oh, it's not, you know. Of course it is. Just a thing to fill the space in the newspapers, isn't yeah, it? You might have something there. Don't you start an off. No, no, I don't agree with everything, but he's right there. I mean, it's all cracked up in, uh, in newspapers and on television. Yeah, a load of hot air. I mean, I put it on the same level as uh, hula hoops. What's one of them when it's at all? Oh, before your time, would I? I said you was prehistoric. That proves it. You know, you would ask my old man about hula hoops. He always had a scheme going. Every one of Titanic. We were eating hula hoops. Well, one minute they were popular, next minute you couldn't give them away. Like uh, skateboards and women's lib. There is no comparison. I mean, of course there is. I mean, what is women's lib? Eh? It's a name, a fashion, a trend. Who can afford it anyway? I mean, it would die a very nasty death. Listen, I want a photograph of you to stick on Tracy's wall, and then when she grows up, she'll know what a male chauvinist pig looks like. <laughs> Anything to oblige. Yeah, well, send us one. She's already got one of a dinosaur. They'll go very nicely. OK, and in the meantime, what are you doing tonight? You are. Well, here, babysit for you, won't you? Yeah. And uh, going along with your ideas, you can take me to dinner. You know what you can do, don't you? Well, think about it, eh? I mean, uh, we could always go Dutch. Ooh. He only does it to get you going, you know, and you fall for it. Oh, get away. He believes every word he's saying. Oh, well, you won't be wanting a babysitter, then. <sighs> Morning, Fred. Morning. By gum, you can see Mrs. Walker's not here. Can you? Well, I mean, Fred, if she was here, she wouldn't have that milk bottle on the table. Well, I mean, they sterilise milk bottles, don't they? I mean, jugs, well, they get washed. It's a wonder anything gets washed while you're on your own. Oh, don't worry, I've got a nice little system for looking after myself, Betty. It works very nicely. Uh, a system, have you? Mm. Yes, I like to hear about it, love. Well, I leave them all to accumulate, see, and then I wait for some good woman to come along and she can't stand it and get stuck in, you know. It works very nicely. Something in the nature, I think. Oh, the state of this sink! Oh! Well, of course, it's Muggins here left to do all the messages, isn't it? She's only taking herself off to town. Get something to eat, she says, that's all. Yeah, well, it gives you plenty of scope anyway. Well, I don't know what people eat, do I? I mean, what do people eat? I've been doing it all my life, but what do they eat, do you yeah, know? I know what you mean. I'm the same myself, and I'm surrounded with the stuff all day long. I says to her, what should I get? She says, think of something. Surprise me. Proper shirty and all. I said, what should you heard? Surprise me. Could this be mutiny? You know what I think it is, don't you? It's since our bride left home. I reckon that they must lose interest like when the brood's gone. Well, you want to tickle a fancy a bit. Hey, I've got some very nice frying ham here. You know, thinking about it, all the years we've been wed, she's chosen every mouthful that's passed down my gullet. In the house, like. Now, that's lovely, is that? I've tried that personal. You try that with some mushrooms, you've got it waxed. Hey, right. Hello, hello, hello. Where are you going to, my Easy. pretty maid? That's your mum shouting you. I don't think she wants you to go out, you oh, know. Oh, you're flipping <laughs> right, she doesn't. Now, come on. You can play in the back, but you mustn't play out here. Hey, it's a pity she hasn't got come anywhere on. to play, is it, really? Now, go on. She's good, though, isn't she? <sighs> I'm glad you think so. Get on, she's as good as gold. Hey, you're dead chuffed, aren't you? You're quite enjoying this, having a kid round the house. I am, do you know, for an old man that's passed it, I'm quite enjoying it. It's funny, though, how they have to play on the pavement. We used to be the same, even at their age. Ah, there wasn't the traffic then, though. You're right. Do you know what? I used to play alleys in the gutter all the way to work. I mean, you can't do that today, can you? Oh, no, you wouldn't last five minutes. And cricket, it's the death of cricket. I mean, kiddies can't play in the street anymore. Do you know, when I was a lad, we had a proper field inside everything. Yeah, yeah. well, now, I mean, they park the cars in the slips, don't they? <laughs> hey, Gail and Brian have got a garden, haven't they? Well, you could call it that, aye. It's not big enough for a game of cricket, mind you. You might manage an energetic game of drafts, that's about oh. it. It's big enough for that. I don't care. It'd be marvellous when that baby comes along. Yeah. That's true. Mind you, I think they've made the right decision. It's just the mortgage. Still worries me, you know. It's got to be worth it, though. Like, listen to me talking these hours. I mean, that worries me, you know, what with short time and everything. Why? You like to be, uh... Well, it's on the cards. I mean, the other factory's on short time now. Oh, hard times. 
Uh, do you still want this on, then? Why not? I mean, we may as well have it while we can afford it. <laughs> Honestly, up until last week, I, I, I thought everything was turning out just fine. You know, I couldn't see a cloud in the sky. Why did you trust him? I know, I know I need my head tested. You can't half pick him. Honest, ma'am, you're not fit to be let out. Well, I can't go and stay at Carol's. You did meet Carol, didn't you? Well, I think so. Well, I can't go there. There's all that trouble with her husband. So this is the only place you could think of? Honest, love, if I could think of anywhere else, I wouldn't bother you. Well, we can only offer you the sofa. Oh, that's fine, really. It won't be for long, honest. I'll be going down to the labour today. As soon as I've got that sorted out, I'll, I'll look for a flat or a bed sit or something. I've just got to get the assistant sorted out first. I thought you had a job. Yeah, well, that's all part of it and all had being the operative word. I'm owed money there and all. You're in a mess. Oh, I'll live. You still haven't told me how it happened. I mean, how it came about. Look, you, look I will. I'll tell you everything. Just let me get my sense of humour about first. And it's all to do with what's his name? Don't mention his name, Gail. I don't want to hear his name again. He was supposed to be paying your rent. You know, that sounds awful when you put it like that. Oh, ma'am. Well, it wasn't as bad as that. Anyways, it turned out he wasn't paying it. I really thought he was divorced, Gail. Honest to God. Oh, ma'am. Does Brian mind? Well, I can't lie to you. Well, it's only till I've got myself sorted out. Honest. You'll never get yourself sorted out. And two's fine. Thank you, love. Yeah. Come again. Sure. Hey, we better get cracking with these balm cakes, love. Yeah, I'll get started, though. Yeah, don't make so many, though. We're getting a lot left these days. Okay. How do you do? Morning, Mr. Roberts. Ah, now, you've got the advantage of me. I know you're from somewhere, though. I do know you. I've seen you been British Legion before now. Mr. Shawcross, isn't it? Aye. Uh, well, what are you doing round here? You ought to know that and all. Give me some of them strong mints. Should I? Well, it was your council put compulsory purchase on. It shifted us all out of Colbrook Street. Oh, aye, it's coming down, isn't it? And perfectly good houses. They're not a slum. People, that's what people think, you know. Once the council knocks you down, they think uh, you've been living in a slum. No, it's not that at all. They've got to come down to make extension for the hospital, you see. Everybody knows that. They think we were living in a slum. So, have they re you around here, then? They haven't re me nowhere. I've just moved in with my sister in uh, Inkerman Street. Oh, well, that's handy. Yeah, uh, handy in that place they offered me. They took me and showed me, like, very nice, near Birmingham. Oh, now you're exaggerating. They put us all in a mini coach and we turned round the road and it said to Birmingham and the south. And I said, that's enough. That's as far as I'm going. Well, you know what they've done. They've taken you around a bit at New Motorway. That, yeah, they have, because I know where you were going. I don't care which road they went yeah, on. It's, it's not that far. We're very careful, you know, not to shift people too far. Birmingham, it said. Birmingham and the south. Yeah, I tell you, it's not more than, what, five miles as the crow flies from your old house to where they were moving you. You see, what they've done, they've taken a shortcut. It's quicker to go round the motorway and then cut through. Very nice if you have a car. Yeah, well. And anyway, as soon as I saw them signs... No. Any road. I'm like a dog in a new place. I'm just still sniffing anything. Yeah, well, it's not that different round here from Colebrook Street, is it? Oh, it is. There are no strangers in Colebrook Street. You've got lots of them living here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll go and give that pub a sniff. Ah, uh, why not? They'll be open now. Oh, you don't know what number Mr Tatlock lives at? Ah, uh, number one. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, I've been there in my time, but I could never remember the number. Hey, <laughs> have one for me, will you? Ah. Uh, Ta-da. Ta-da. Hey, there's a character just been in. Do you know what he says? Tracy's not in the shop, is she? I've not seen her, love. No, you know where he housing, Oh, Pete? where is she? She's not in the back. Well, I don't know. She'll be somewhere about. She's not gone out of that door, has she? No, she hasn't. I'm perfectly sure of that, love. Is she not leaking it backyard? Tracy? Tracy? Here, was this gate not locked? Oh, I opened it for lemonade, fella. Tracy! Tracy! Ceiling were painted by Michelangelo, mate. First effort in emulsion. Certainly a bit, soon it we're done. Oh. Give us half a mile, will you? Well, you haven't seen out of Albert Tatlock knocking about, have you? Albert? Well, he lives next door. Ah, oh, he's not. He's not in. Oh? 
He usually pops in at dinner, half a mile and a free read of my paper, you know. I happen he'll step by if I wait on a bit. Aye, he might do. Dependable as rain, Albert, and twice as miserable as you on a free read of my paper. <laughs> That's very good of you. There you go. Well, I'll not have it said you were a miserable sort of chap. Not Albert, with his sense of humour. You do mean Albert Saflock? Huh. Used to have us in stitches. I'm depending on him to cheer me up a bit. You must be bad, mate. Well, has anybody seen little Tracy? But she's gone, Kent. She's just gone. Look, the twins did this. They're forever doing it. It's quite normal. Yeah, but she's gone. I mean, where's she gone? Well, look, I don't know. Did she have anywhere in mind, like uh, the swing, something like that? I did she mention that? I think of anywhere Well, she must have all. thought of something, like a shop, a pet shop, a oh, toy she, shop, she anything She never said like anything. Oh, look, let me go and look for look, her. There's no point rushing around hairless. Has she not turned up no, yet? No, no, oh. she hasn't. Look, I'll get down to the Red Wreck. Alf, would you go down Viaduct? Aye, I'll just get me coat. Excuse me. Well, what shall I do, love? Uh, take Deirdre. Now, go yeah. down Rosamond Street and check all the shops. Yeah. If we haven't found her in 15 minutes, we'll yeah. ring the police. Okay. Deirdre, come on, come on Deirdre. Deirdre, I've found her. Oh, Alf, where was she? Where did she get to? Tracy? Tracy? I didn't mean to lock it. Oh, you see. Silly, silly, silly girl. Just try turning the key, lovey. Just try turning the key, lovey. No, not the, not the handle, love, the key. It won't. Well, which way are you turning it? This way. <sighs> Are you there? Alf? Ooh, anybody? All right, all right. Oh, it's you. We've got a bit of a crisis on. Is it something you wanted to hurry? Oh, well, no. What sort of crisis? Tracy's locked herself in lovey. Oh, dear. Hey, I'll just... Hey, hang on. You haven't got a minute, have you? Oh, yes, I've got a couple of hours. Oh, great. You couldn't hold the fort for us here, could you? Oh, yes, if you like. You're a little marvel. I shouldn't be long. Oh, anything to help. <laughs> Changed as good as the best. Yeah, well, I won't be... Oh, hey, your pal was looking for you. Did he find you? Who was that? Uh, Mr. Shawcross. Monty? Well, where is he? Well, you'll likely find him at Rovers. Oh, well, I'm likely to have had a look in. Well, I've told you anyway. You're in the wrong shop. Busman's holiday. It's no use, Alf. There's not enough space under the door. She can't push the key through. Yeah, well, let's see if there's anything here that'll do. Are you all right in there, Tracy? Oh, because... Yes, so we're trying to get you out, aren't we? Hopefully, without breaking the door down. Oh, it's stupid. Yeah, I can't be up. Isn't it funny how you never throw any keys away? I don't know where half these came from. That looks like it might do. Oh, I'm sorry, Alf. It can't be up, love. Listen, Len going to Bet's flat for her. Now, where did that come from? Well, perhaps he could do it again. He yeah, maybe he could, yeah. Well, there's no tells in his looks like it looks as if it will do. Mommy. What? I don't like it in here. I want my dolly. Well, you can't have your dolly, can you? <sighs> Look, I'll, uh, I'll go see if I can find Lane. OK. Well, tell them as much for your paper. No. Oh, any time, pal. I mean, I'll see you again sometime. Ah, oh, well, you know where I am. Beginning with w. Hey, here's Lad himself. Well, yet you think you're going? I'm on the lookout for you. Well, now you've found me, you start celebrating. He'll serve you if he can get in to stir himself. We're going in snow. Come on. Yeah. Nolte, does he? No. Comical as ever. Uh, he can be very droll. Well, uh, a glass of mild and uh, whatever he has. Well, if somebody else is paying, it's a large rum. Rum? Oh, I've seen him on rum, no. He's a terror. Better make it a glass of mine. I know. Is everything all right, Al? No, she's still locked in. Oh, dear. But look, I'm looking for Len. Well, he's not been in. I've been driving in the yard. There's no answer. What? She's still locked in there? Here, can you pick a lock? Well, I don't know, but I'll have a go, lad. Well, I'm just trying to find a way of opening the door without breaking it down. Yeah. Well, can't she not pass the key under the door, you know, Alf? No, she can't. I see to manage that. Oh. Look, if Len comes in, will you tell him? I will, love, yeah. All right, look, finish the cross. OK, come on, Well, you're practically a neighbour, aren't you? Huh? Why did they put you to so much trouble for naught? How do you mean, like? Well, according to our Ken, he keeps himself up, you know. According to him, the idea of a hospital is put into cold storage. You see, it's these cuts. Well, then we're all shifted. Well, they are just to case the right hand know what the left hand does. Well, hell fire. 
all. Well, there is confusion to them. And that's the toast they don't need. Can you manage, Bert? Nah. What are you doing now, Tracy? I'm fed up. <laughs> Here, yeah, have a look at the pictures in that. Have you got it? Well, it could hardly have got lost in the post, could it? You know what? We're tattling this from the wrong side. If we were on the other side, there wouldn't be a problem. No, through the window. The window. We put the ladder up against the window and the kiddie just answers the key. Brilliant. The only thing is we haven't got a ladder. Well, I'll see if Stan's around then. Oh, I bring Stan in on it. We'll have everybody in the blooming street on it soon. I'm sorry, Al. Oh. I'll just go and see if I can find him. Yeah. Do you know if the bathroom window's open at all? I'll have a look. Are you all right, love? Are you coping? I am. That's no trouble. Are you? Uh, yeah, we're going to try it by the direct route now. Straight up the north face. What's that, lovey? Oh, well, what word? I mean, I can't see it, can I? Uh, hold it up to the keel. A bit higher. It says, Teddy, Teddy is at the seaside. Can you see his bucket and spade? <laughs> No, well, he wasn't there, was he? So I borrowed it. He wasn't oh, mine, will he? I dare say. Hey, watch what you're doing. Look, take it easy. Be careful. Oh, shut up, will you? Look, we don't want to break a window. That's all we need. We've break got a to window. get the ladder over the sill, have we? tin lid on it, won't it? Oh, come on here. Get up, James. Oh, I hate ladders. Oh, so were you. You've got me footing for you, haven't you? Well, see you do. Right, off you go. <laughs> come on, you'll have it down. Oh, get up. Do that. Hold the ladder. <laughs> it's only me, love. It's only me. Oh. You're Uncle Al. Hello. Uh, listen, what I want you to do, I want you to go get the key and then pass it up to me, you see. Go get the key. Uh, you see, you pass it to me and then I'll go back down and then I can let you out. Can, can you just pass it up a bit higher? Just, just... I uh... oh, can't. I can't, I can't. Oh, it's no good. I, I can't manage. Can't you get her to stand on something? Oh, nay, we don't want to fall out at window. Here, have you got longer arms than me? No, but I've got an idea. Come on down. I'm just going away a minute. You wait there. Yeah. Deirdre, have you any barn cakes made up? Oh, I know. Sorry, she says no. It won't take me five oh, minutes. Five minutes, she says. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we've got a bit of a crisis on, but it won't take me a few minutes to make some up, or else we've got pies. Oh, well, never mind. We'll go to the pub and have a... Come on, no. Hi, girls. Hey, you haven't got a bag, have you? Well, what sort of a bag? Well, a paper bag, a carrier bag, out like that. Not too big, though. Oh, and some string. Ah, there you are. Are you coming home for your dinner or not? Oh, no, yes. Uh, hey, are them pies hot? Yes, Albert. Oh, well, I'll be having some of dear then. Oh, right. Well, I'll join you. Uh, you know Mr. Shawcross, don't you? Oh, yes, I do. How do you do? Aye. You want a pie, then I what? Aye. What, just uh, just a one? I'll try one. Three, please, Fred. Hello. Him and me were on some together, you know. Some? That's going back a bit, Albert, isn't it? Well, there's always a few of us left. Right. You know, it's a thing I've always regretted, that, you know. Me, I was too young, I never served. Well, I served like, only, you know, I didn't see any action, you know what I mean? What are you regretting it for? Carrying yourself lucky? I'm just saying it must be nice, you know. I mean, look at Albert, he's got a little medal for his chest, hasn't he? Too right, he has. <laughs> You're looking at Chapel, won't it, for him? She's been singing that song for 60 years now, he has. You know yourself. But I, I know the name that's on the back of that medal. It could have been half a dozen different names. Yeah. Only yours come out at that. That's how it were, you know. When we took that machine gun, there were a whole lot that have got that medal. But at the end, only six of us could have done it. And you wouldn't have been one of them if I hadn't thrown you down. No. Have I started something? Well, you and the Kaiser. <laughs> there you are, that's it. Right, then. You and me. Well, it's your bright idea. Fair enough. Hey, just you hold this ladder steady, oh, all right? Because of my nerves. Hey, Tracy. Tracy, love. It's uh, Bert. Listen. I'm going to put this bag through the window and I want you to put the key in it. All right, love. Can you hear me? Can you see the bag? Now I want you to put that key in it, love. Tracy? Where are you? Tracy, love? Are you there? 
Tracy! Oh, Tracy, how did you get out? Bloody Nora. Oh, Tracy, you'll be the death of us all. Hey, shove that kid back in here. I want to try this out. Well, I was saying, stuck up there with your bag and your bit of string, you look all right, Jesse. <laughs> well, I'll say this. This is the last time. No, Gail, I mean it. I mean, I look at you and Brian and I see how happy you are and everything. And then I look at myself. Do you know, suddenly I can see the truth. I mean, you go through life thinking things just happen to you, don't you? But it's not. It's me being so daft as to let things happen. Oh. Hey, Luffy, what's the matter? What is it? Are you all right? Oh, I'm all right. I just... Uh, Gail, now you're sure everything's all right, yeah. you know? She just wasn't dizzy. What are you doing now? You all right? Yes, yes, she's OK. She, she's just been feeling dizzy. Hey, love. Oh, it's all right. I'm just a bit tired or something. I'll get you a drink of water. Ta. What are you doing now? Get your sandwiches? No, no, um... I went to the cafe and told Elsie you weren't coming in, but, well, Cedric was there, love. Well? Well, I had to tell him you weren't coming in. Did he mind? No, but he said he thought it was time you handed your notice in anyway. I can't. Look, love, he was OK about it, but, look, he was spelling it out. We need the money, if only for a couple of weeks. Oh, it's right, love. You're to finish. I mean, just look at you. We need the money. Yeah, but he says he doesn't need a pregnant waitress, love. I had all the shopping to cut. And you know what buses are like this time of the night? Like rugger scrolls. Yeah, so I thought I'd give Brian a ring to see if he can't borrow a car. Yes, I know didn't as well, you know, love. Honestly, girl, seven months pregnant, getting dizzy spells. I can see you being fetched home in an ambulance. Oh, nag, nag, well, nag. Yes, if that robe hadn't have been there, the prey plate's handing the bus out. Well, then well. I got one of the drivers from the cafe to give me a lift home. <laughs> you brazen hussy. I might have come home with ten tonne of bananas. <laughs> Honestly, girl, you are looking a few degrees under. Don't you think she's a nagger? Well, you see, what I can't face is the guilt. I thought you were going to say me and me rollers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must admit, that is a pretty daunt in sight. But no, it's me guilt I'm talking about. Do you think you should in mixed company? Here I am, just beginning to spark. And I don't you think that I'm just beginning to spark about? Oh, no danger. Well, there you are. And it's no wonder. <gasps> I've had the most wonderful, lazy day. Doing me nails, doing me hair. Reflecting soberly on what destroyed last month's love of my life. Hmm. Oh, no, it was wonderful. Your little house all to myself, hogging the hot water, pinching your dishy husband shampoo. Hey, and I hope you left me some, eh? While your precious daughter's out working, seven months pregnant. Is that kettle on? Oh, of course it's on. Now, there's tea in the pot and there's three steak pies in the oven. One of your nourishing meals, ma'am. I'll be all right with a good night's sleep. Now, listen, Gail. I know I am approaching... <coughs> Well, let's say me forties with nothing to me name but a file that thick at the Social Security. But you've still got your health and your looks. But I can still think straight and I've still got my sense of priorities. I can manage another month, Mum. <clears throat> I think he's passing his sin to or something. Oh, come out. Let the dog see the rabbit. Well, you feel so silly, don't you, when you've made a fuss about something and it turns out to be not. I oh, know, I was all set for calling fire brigade. And then she comes toddling round the corner and looks mm. invert up the ladder. <laughs> anyway, she's dining out tonight. She's gone to Auntie Emily's for a tea. Mr. York shouldn't get her head stuck up chimney. Oh, don't. <laughs> hey, you know, I got my head stuck once in some railings down the red wreck. Mm. It'd be about seven, I suppose. Well, they thought they were going to have to call in welding equipment. Anyway, what they did, they rubbed Vaseline all oh, round me. Oh, put all this on then. Oh, Tracy locking herself in loo. Oh, well, I've done worse than that. Here we go. Right, I once got my aunt caught in a Lady Bobby's knicker last oh, night. Oh, friend. <laughs> no, honest, I once got my arm stuck up a rat hole for about ah. three hours. Go on, pull the other one, it's got bells on. Hook again, I'm telling you, we put the ferret in, it got stuck. I shoved my arm right in, I got a right nail job oh, off them rats, oh. I'm telling you. Well, anyway, DJ, if you're free tonight and you feel like a drink. Yeah, <laughs> sure, man. Hey, I'll tell you, better still, coming out the rovers by me one, it's my birthday. Get away, Fred. You weren't born, were you? Oh, but I were a lovely baby, me. They used me in an advert. What for? Nappy rash? Talcum powder. Al. <laughs> hey, do you know, I never knew that I was born. My dad always said that they'd grown me in our backyard. He said mustard and cress wouldn't do very well, so they grew me instead. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, if there's a bus organised, if the Weatherfield British Legion have laid on a bus... And will you put that lid back on that polish? Gets cracked if you leave lid off. 
And anyway, I don't know as how they are the end of a song. Look, if a party's going down to march past the cenotaph on Remembrance Sunday, then a chat with the military medal, well, well, they're bound to be pleased, aren't they? No room on it for me. They're full of chat for the service time in. Hey, lousy. Yeah, well, you said exactly the same thing last year. You know, I don't think you want to go for a minute. I haven't been asked, have I? Makes you wonder who does get asked, doesn't it? It's just wangling. Yeah, well, it's just a good excuse for a moan. I know, that's all we did in front line trenches, according to you lot. And take your foot off that city. Sorry. Is that my sock? Been looking all over the place for that. Well, it's full of holes. And if that's for me, I'm not in. Oh, yes, yeah. come in. Yes, he's in. <laughs> Welcome a bit of company, weren't you, Uncle Albert? I bring Alt Street in. Evening, Albert. I'll do. <laughs> How are you suffering, eh? <laughs> and before you say out, don't worry. I've not come on my own. Oh, I know you fetch. Fetch this. Sweeten you up a bit. Right, well, I'll leave you two old comrades at it then, shall I? Well, you can take Monty with you and leave me with rum. Laugh <laughs> <laughs> a minute, old Albert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not tonight, though. Uh, he's got a bit of darning to do. Oh. I'll see you. <laughs> Pull the chair up. <clears throat> Breath goes a bit up your brew. What brew? I thought you'd come to live in Inkerman Street. And there isn't a brew between here and Inkerman Street. No brews. Oh. The breath is going then. No, to tell you the truth, I've been doing a bit of home marching. Marching? You want to stick to shopping. Ah, oh, but I've been asked, you see. Well, I asked what? Asked to march. Remembrance Day down to Whitehall, to Senator. Oh, I don't know. When I was a nipper, you know, I used to stand on the street corner telling everybody, you know what I mean? Oh. Anybody who'd listen, broadcasting the fact it was my birthday. <laughs> yeah, hoping for the odd tanner, no doubt. <laughs> well, that was roughly the thing, you know, yeah. You wake up in the morning and you think crimes, there's another year gone. <laughs> Tom, mate. Many happy returns to you and all. <laughs> What's tickling you lot? I was just wondering when the party is. I mean, when are the paper hats coming out? I wanted a party after time, but Mrs. White, I was here, says no. Oh. Would it be wise? I mean, with Mrs. Walker being away. Won't buy me a prezi and she moans when I mention party. I can't stop you. Mm, no little jelly she won't make me either. Oh, shut <laughs> up. Now, shut your eyes and hold your hand up. Oh, give over. I've had all that from you. Now, come on, I'm not going to cane you. You big soft kid. Look, he's peeping. Come on, better make both, it good. Both your no eyes. Ankies. I'm going back to the No shop. ankies, yeah. come on. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There you are. Oh, pair of socks. Yeah. Oh, it can be very nice socks, you yeah, You want to see the socks Uncle Albert buys me? Where they get the wool from is the mysterious Oh, part. look, it's a tie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Betty, though. Know. Thanks, Betty. I thought it could be dangerous, a tie. Fatal if you go through the swing doors the wrong way. No, well, before you start fibbing and saying how very thrilled you are, I've got something else for you. It's from Betty. Oh, there'll be Herbal. some crack. How far how come you got so far without being shot? Well, she particularly <laughs> wanted to have it on the day. Oh. For the man who has everything. Ooh. Intriguing. Oh. <laughs> I've got nobody to play postman's lock with. Hey, oh, I don't know about that. Look at these oh, two. Hello, these two hello, like hello. Expecting a party, Betty. Yeah, you go. Maybe there isn't one. Belly <laughs> button warm. How tough can you get? <laughs> in case you get a puncture yeah. in your fur coat. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know your name's Ken, but I didn't know it was Ken Don. Hey, wait a minute, it might just be Ken Don. That looks like the end of somebody's titling stick <laughs> to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, never mind, it's the thought that counts, Fred. Well, if it's thoughts you want, there's a card here. Well, whatever it says, I'm sure we all share its sentiments. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on, oh, listen. You scratch my belly button, and I'll scratch yours. Not the best. I'll peel the potatoes and put some carrots in. At least it'll smell like stew. Well, come on, let me do the peeling, all right? You can't peel for tough. Of course I can peel. And you peel, there's no tater left. Look, will you two go and sit down and let me do the spud bashing? You can butter the bread. Come on, get it, don't be so thick. Well, come on, love, get your feet away. I'm not being thick. We need something inside ourselves. Look, get I know I'm no Fanny Craddock, and I know I burnt the pies to a frizzle, but I can peel potatoes. You'll leave all the eyes in. Oh, I give up, let me know. You are going the right way to make yourself ill, my girl. I'm fine. Just leave me alone to get the dinner. Me and Brian are working tomorrow. We need something inside ourselves. Now, I know you meant well, Mum, but you have ruined three perfectly good pies. Well, I'm not used to gas, am I? Yes, well, we've lost one meal. You're going to lose something else if you're not very careful. I tell you what, we will lose if I'm not careful. We'll lose that sofa, oh, won't God, we? So... we lose the kettle, now, the cooker, yeah, the tomatoes, the doormat. No. If hey, I get hey, something hey, to hey, say, hey, I'm hey, tired. Yay, 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 go on. <laughs> now, listen. You're leaving that calf first thing in the morning, OK? <laughs> Trying to kid as you were coping when you weren't, and all over money. Look, love, I'd sell this lot for firewood if I had to. You know what 
I think, kids. I think we should go out for a meal. And before you start doing your sums, it's on me. And before you start saying, well, you've given for your keep, can you afford it? I think I can just about give us all a rump steak and still be all right for the end of the week. And I'm not going to think any further than that. Well, there's no place worth going around here, Audrey. Well, you've got the car outside, haven't you? Yeah, but I've got to take it back. It's been picked up first thing in the morning. Oh, come on, Brian. What difference would a few hours make? Well, we could get a bus somewhere and get a taxi back. I'll pay. Oh, lovey, you know how I hate buses. Come on. Let's do it in style for once. Hey? You'll have to do some marching down wide hall, you know. That's why I'm going on walks, isn't it? Getting in training. I think it was slightly further than what we walked. Now, what can I get you, gentlemen? Two arms of bitter, please. Huh. Have you been for a walk? We've been down to War yeah. Memorial and back. Oh, great. Well, of course you can cope. It'll be quiet tonight. All she has to do is give me a shout if there's a rush on. Oh, you like a little lad, you are, really. Is he mither in your betty, then? Oh, he, he wants to put a party on in Her Majesty's parlour. Well, it's a natural thing to have it after, isn't it? Only she goes and puts the flipping block on. Yeah, you can imagine it, can't you? A right boozy do. Right, well, why don't we have it now, then? A big soft kid, isn't he? I don't know, Betty. It is nice to have a party on your birthday. Yeah, a few mates, few bevies, touch of the blind man's buffs. He'll sulk all now, Betty, if he's then all. Little boys can sulk less than little girls. They can sulk something awful. It's only a question of holding the fort, but well, if you don't think you can manage it. Oh, go on then. Got old better, your blood's worth bottling. <laughs> hey, right, lads, come on, cheer up. We're having a party and you're all invited. Yeah, no, I reckon I need my bum's feeling. Yes. You're invited and all, girls. Now, look, give me about 30 minutes to get it ready, eh? Musical chairs. Passes the parcel. Should we go, dear? What do you think? Well, I wouldn't mind, Mavis, but I think he's got you in mind for the parcel. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday, Frederico. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. It's all right remembering, but I've been remembered for six months. And I've known fellows who've lost their arms and lost their legs. And they've lived that 60 odd years on charity. But you're not saying it's all sham, I yell, but. No, of course I'm not saying it's all sham. I sure hope not. Only just now you're complaining about how people got picked. Well, put your name down. Well, Albert never put his name down for notes. Not unless it was a free rum ration. <laughs> how the hell he ever got in the first place, I never know. You lot don't know you're born. That's your trouble. You don't know you're born. Hey, are you coming to supper or not? Kiss me goodnight, Sergeant <laughs> Major. <laughs> it's all right for you. Tuck Mr. Gordon reserved occupation. <laughs> Tuck me in, in my, my little wooden, wooden bed. bed. Hey, 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 hey. Kiss oi, me. Oi, oi. A little order, please. I'll have a small whiskey, my darling. Did you get it? A little order. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Fred sat there waiting to have his air pulled. Uh, what bit he's got left? Oh, no, come on. No, he'll be in tears. Yeah, but where's the cracker bit? What cracker? The cracker. The ladies, the beautiful ladies. I mean, uh, well, uh, Deirdre's gone. Mavis has walked out. Yeah, and Beth isn't here. Hello, hello. Oh, oh, yeah. To be very cruel to let him down. I mean, he's like a little lad at heart, you yes, know. Yes, but Betty, my darling, once we are in there, we are trapped. Yeah. yeah, but he's expecting all his mates to turn up. Well, that's what he's got, isn't it? All his mates. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, don't you think that's a bit mean? A bit. Oh, it's not that <laughs> Right, ready when you are, lads. First come, first served. Well, right, we'll, we'll be in in a minute. <laughs> right, I'll, uh, I'll get the ale ready. Right, yeah, right, very good. Very hey, fellas. Good. What, what do you think of this? It's all right. It's just a fly something. Look, when we get home, we'll all set to and polish it before it goes back. Are you worried about having it out so late? Nah. I wouldn't have it back before 11 anyway. Yeah. Right. Come on. Where's the lads not over? They've gone. No. What a flipping shower, all right? A lot of do-downs, eh? Mm. 51 today. All right. 51 today. All right, all right. He's got the call. Less than the 51s, eh? 91. All right, two, all right, three, all right. Yeah, we're we're not not 
43 will do, Alf. 43? I've got a great head in my head to show for it at all. Yeah, yeah, I'll just look upstairs, Fred. Yeah. yeah, well, listen, don't use the towel with the crest on it and watch that lavender soap. Wait, we'll hey, Fred, have you got one of those can opener things? Right, there's one on there, so I'll get pouring. Hey, we'll never shift all this lot, Fred. I wouldn't have had my tea if I'd known. Right, I thought we'd have a, a bit of a kitty, you know, like a uh, couple of quid a piece or something. Well, oh, heck, Fred, you're spared no expense here. I can see that. Hey, hang on, steady on. You are in for a very nasty surprise, mate. Yeah, we're all chipping in, seemingly. Well, come on, I mean, he wouldn't get this lot for two notes anywhere, would you? <laughs> New type of birthday party, pay at the door. Uh, well, I reckon note to that. What do you mean? You what, we're standing out there, minding our own business, you invite us in, then we've got to find money for it. Well, I, I mean, I've booked a stripper, you know. No, come on, joking apart, it's not on, is it? All right, forget the 20 quid, I'll pay it out my own pocket, it's just that, uh, well, I haven't asked for a present, had I? Oh, what? Well, it is a birthday party. I mean, a present's like a condition, isn't it? Well, never mind. I mean, if he's got us a stripper, you yeah. know. Weather feels best. Drives him barmy down at the Labour Club. Yeah, well, I don't think I could take that at close quarters. <laughs> Get on the kitchen table, kicking her legs up, doing a fan dance. There's no stripper. <laughs> Oh, if that's her, I'm going home. Come on, Bubbles, get your tassels fixed. Hey, there's a bloke downstairs wants some bottles to take out. We need a crate up. Any volunteers? No, not no, really. no, no, no. Hey, you can all get working on your speeches as well. Yeah, our tributes to your <laughs> charm and generosity, Fred. It'll be short speeches, then. <laughs> he's got a nerve, hasn't he? Yeah. Well, that's Fred, isn't it? I mean, he's got something lacking him, hasn't he? Do you think he has got a stripper? I hope not, mate. The sort of stripper that Fred could get for one of mine buggles. Yeah, two quid for a stripper and Neil dancing with a blow lamp. You know what I mean? Eh? Blow lamp, mate. Paint, stripper. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and to think we said we'd pay tributes to him. Yeah. Yeah. Look at it. There's nothing there. I mean, look at it. You two face so and so. It's all cheese, isn't it? Listen, I'm surrounded by cheese all day long in the shop. I'm always having a nibble. <laughs> no one, you're always looking knackered then. <laughs> <laughs> no joking aside, I must admit, cheese is hard to get down by itself, isn't it? Uh, yeah, is yeah, right. Have you ever tried Kukau's porridge, mate? <laughs> Listen, I can eat cheese faster than I can eat ice cream. Never. Bit of cheddar like that. No bother. Can you eat that cheese quicker than he can suffer pint, then? Well, I'm not saying that. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll bet you something. I bet you that I can suck that pint, right, with a teaspoon. Quicker than you can eat that cheese. Never. Not less as a catch. No, no catch. Straight up. Well, I'll back myself against mm. that if there's no catch. Right, right. Bet on them. Eh? Yeah, why not? What'd you say? Uh, a quid? Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, yeah. you worship, Betty yeah. Spoon. Yeah. Right. Cupboard. Money on the table. Good. Good. Fingers. All right, then. Are we all set? Are on your marks? Yep. Get set. Go. Boop. <laughs> I hate going down that war memorial. Well, I'm sorry if it upset you. Chris Packett. Pagans, dogs cocking their legs up, and on that plaque and all with all them names, all them ghosts. They were good lads, Albert. Come with us, Remembrance Day to London, to Senator. Oh, you've got to get your name down. It's not a matter of getting your name down, and you know it. This puts your name down automatic. I know, there's a bus going, but there won't be any room on it for me. Before the sergeant majors, I reckon. <laughs> no, like that, you morning old devil. I know it's class distinction, whatever you care to say. Men got a medal. The officers get a cross. You don't mean that. They're better off buying a snooker table. It'll be a great occasion. Marching past that cenotaph, Queen taking salute. Might be a last chance. Oh, don't. It certainly will be mine. Don't talk so soft. You'll be going strong at 90. In fact, we both will. <laughs> I always thought you were a bit bolshy, Albert. <laughs> always ready to speak your mind. <laughs> but this is for old comrades, old pals. Yeah, well, no disrespect, but I'd be better off sitting in snooging instead of standing around cenotaph catching me death. Oh, you don't, a little me. I mean, you don't think it's all baloney, do you? I think it's a long way to Tipperary. Hey, and don't forget, Put your winter woolies on. <laughs> well, thanks for supper. I'll be seeing you. And don't forget, watch for me up, telly. I will. Oh, I'm wanting. Huh? When you're marching past, show a bit of swank. <laughs> 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 it's all in the wrist, you know. Inherited technique. My old man must have won about 500 quid on the old teaspoon gang. Mm. Pound of apples, dozen eggs, you name it, he's ripped them off. Uh, couldn't get it down, you know. Couldn't <laughs> chew it, it gets stuck in my throat. Anyone else fancy? No, you? thank no, you. No. I'll tell you, Mike, though. Fred. Hey. Yeah. Oh. There you are. Fred kissed well, kissed, eh? 
Happy birthday. <laughs> Come round when it's yours, love, and tell your old fella it's a sports sport. This party needs you. Oh. <laughs> I bet you need a drink, don't you, love? And you come with me, please. <laughs> hey, I heard a good joke the other day. Oh, yeah. yeah. A woman went into the bank. She's got a pound note in one ear and five pound in the other. Huh? The fella says to the clerk, he says, uh, do you know this woman? <laughs> the clerk said, yes, yeah, says, we know her. Six pound in her ears. No, hang on, hang on a minute. What, what you're saying is I, I can't eat a pound of cheese while one of you look such a, such a pint of ale with a spoon. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll do the ale and they'll back me. Yeah. You'll back Alf against me? Yeah. And there's two quid on it. Well, here's my two quid on me. Hang on. All right. And here's another two quid. I'll go abandoned, right? A fiver. OK. Right, well, there's my two. That's 13. 11 says I can't. Two says I can. You want to give him a straw? I'll be in there taking the hackers. Right, OK. Are we all ready, then? Horses to the post. Right. 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 On your mark. Spoon, one pound of cheese, right? Hang on. Right, get set. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Hey, 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 what's your game, then? I'm cutting it up, aren't I? Nothing to say I can't cut it up. It's still a pound, isn't it? I don't know about that, mate. Oh, hang on. Rolling, ref. Rolling. A rolling and he's back to health. Yeah, well, uh, if I roll against, there's no bet because they run out of cheese. Oh, cool. Bet on. Let's get on. OK, now, come on, Annie. You ready? Go. On your marks. Get set. <coughs> come on, Alf. Move yourself. Come on, Go on. Go on. Get your head back. Quicker than that. Thank you, me now. Oh, How's the party going? Oh, I shudder to think. Oh. How was your evening? Oh, well, you know, after we left here, yeah. we, uh, Deirdre and me, we were going round to Emily's to pick up little Tracy because she'd been there for a tea. Yeah. Well, afterwards we sat round talking, you know, and this wildlife film comes on television that Arnold wants to see and, indeed, to concentrate on. Oh. So, he sat there with his hands like this. You know, like shutting us all out, sort of thing. So you got the message, that? Right? Yeah. <laughs> I thought Rita might be in. Going to give you a fair warning, Mavis. Dangerous territory in here tonight. Fred's kissing everybody. This fella here, who's a killer? He keeps telling jokes. Come, come on, oh, last please, last, last please. I'm on. handicapping myself. Yeah, well, don't worry, keep going. You can you always choke. Yep, come on. Tilt your glass around. Hey, I'll get some of your spoon. You don't need to take that chance. You've got the cheese. Down. Good enough. Come on. You're standing on the cheese. Come on, you've got a chance. Oh, sorry. Quick, come on, come on. Oh, no. What a blooming pet. Look, you were supposed to win that so we could get our own back on Fred for taking a mickey. Well, your fault for letting him cut it up. Anytime you like, Ken, same steak. Oh, no, thank you. Listen, listen, what's all this about your old man, mate? Yeah, Yeah, well, he had the technique, didn't he? And I'll tell you something else. You also had the character. You what? We're two quid down the swanee. You talk about character. Look, the idea was it would be a doddle, right? The idea was that he'd be light, not us. Hey, hang on a minute. Are you lot saying all this was a flipping setup? You should have let him do the beer. Oh, that flipping great, innit? What a lot of mates, eh? What a lot of muckers, eh? Well, the next time you pull a stunt like that, you want to go to right, man, not a flipping shirt lad. Oh, keep it down, will you, Fred? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, keep it shut. Keep what shut? Your mouth, this here. What do you oh, mean? Oh, 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 Listen, remember, this is Annie Walker's living room. The holy of holies. And look, and if that sideboard isn't scratched... Oh. Hey. Oh, my God. It is scratched. Hey. Yeah, well, oh, we've got some, some, some tension up and nothing. Still here, you see? Lights not on, aerial unbent. And all set for a quick getaway. Just a few months to give us bread buns in a bag. <laughs> well, they're due for breakfast, won't they? Yeah, I was on flaming pins, I was. <laughs> I thought it was the car you were worried about. <laughs> what it is. Eh? I thought I could hear a horse coming up the street, but it's you chomping away there. I'm a very quiet eater, mate. Uh, In fact, I do everything quiet. What do you do when your body's like a well machine, don't you? Everything. Everything. 
Oh, dear. I don't know how you can eat anything at all. My mouth is like a wee spin after last night. Well, I didn't drink much, did I? As soon as I were driving. Did you get the car back to your garage, Laura? Yeah, no problem. What's a good night, though, wasn't it? Right, it was great. <laughs> Do you think Gail enjoyed it? Well... Yeah, Gail oh. did enjoy it. What have you got up for? I can look after Brian, you know. Mm, from the looks of you, I doubt you can look after yourself. Haven't you got a hangover, either? Nope. Do you know, it can be very depressing living with you healthy folks. <laughs> well, it's your age, Audrey. Mm. You're bound to get aches and pains now, aren't you? Yeah, well, you'll get an ache in your ear hole if you don't watch it. <laughs> You'll have to be going. Are you OK now, love? Don't I look it? Yeah, of course you do. Well, goodbye, Grandma to be. Now, don't forget, wrap up nice and warm when you go, eh? I've warned you. I'm not a fan of big daddies for nothing. <laughs> see ya. Oh, see ya. Well, he's full of himself, isn't he? Is he? You know he is. He's as proud as a new hat. As <laughs> happy as a sad mm. And so he should be. Mm. And by the way, Mum, thanks for taking us out last night. I did enjoy it. It was a nice change. Was it worth it, though? Thing. I wouldn't exactly call it a scratch, Fred. Nah, it's not much of a scratch, is it? Nah. It's more your deep, ugly gouge. Rubbish. You can hardly see it. Well, what, you in a blue funk about, then? Anyway, what have you been putting on it? A spot of gravy brownie. <laughs> gravy brownie? It's not a side of beef, Fred. It's a sideboard. Mrs Walker's side. I know what it what is. What cherishes like a sickly baby, along with every other household article. From the cellar to the attic, and you've gone and gouged it, oh dear. It's not a gouge, it's more a scratch. Wait, it's hardly that. Do you think if I tried a bit of boot polish? Black, you mean? I don't think so. Brown. Oh. Any road, it weren't my flipping fault. Well, you were responsible. It was your 60th birthday party. Give over, 39. I wouldn't push my luck with him, not in your situation, Fred. With Mrs Walker due back in, what, four hours? And blood seeping out of a gouge in her sideboard. Well, fat Al's fault, weren't it? He pushed me, I fell back. I had this fork in my hand, I must have catched it. A fork? What were you and him doing, fencing? Well, we heck. I mean, it's not just that scratch, Fred. Mrs Walker's not exactly going to be over the moon about you and your mates having an orgy in her living room, is she? Oh, I'm off, Em. Right, I'll see you at tea time. Yeah. Brought some fish for a change. Oh, lovely. A piece of haddock with an egg on top. Poached with a dab of butter. <laughs> you and your tummy. Oh, it's never felt better, I might say. Marriage has been very good for it. Oh, I'm not all that good a cook. Oh, you are, you know. Because you put everything into it. You couldn't do anything else. You're that kind of person. I like it. Reward at last for being so fussy. Bye. Bye. really is an eyesore, Arnold. Yes, well, it won't be for very much longer. You've not had a word with Len, have you? Oh, he'll come to his senses, love. He hasn't got the patience for a long war of nerves. I have. Bye. Bye. Such a thing, would you? As a what? A pencil. Just an ordinary flipping pencil. I can't even find one. Not even a stub. HB or 2B. Oh, just a pencil will do. You're late. Been chatting up your little bird again, have you? No, I haven't. Ah, you've seen the light and given another push, have you? I told you I don't see her at all that much. I thought perhaps you had. You've got rid of that damn silly thing out of your ear. Play the field, mate. That's my advice. You know, when I was your age, I had to disguise myself every other day to get a bit of peace. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. We should have been at Westgate half an hour ago. Oh, I saw Mr Swain on me way in. Oh, I what did new face want? Well, he wants to know when you're going to fix his door. His door? Yeah. I'll fix his flaming teeth. 
think you'll find you're going to be well satisfied, Mr. Newell. I took it for a run myself this morning, and that gearbox, it's as sweet as a nut. The only sound you're going to hear now is sound of yourself thinking. I'll tell you how I'd be more satisfied. Oh. When I get my bill, I find out you've knocked the cost of that bloke's taking my car out for the night. And I want some compensation for the aggro, calling the police and that. I reckon 50 quid will cover it. Well, I'll see what I can do. You'll do better than that, if you want to keep me custom. You're all my mates as well, you know. They won't be very happy to find out the cars have been taken out joyriding while you've got them. Well, it's first time it's happened. And the last. Sorry I'm a bit late, Ron. The flaming bus didn't come. I want to see you. Is that him, Nanny? Demon driver? Ah, that's it. Well, I hope he's got a shot coming to him. He has. You know, I prefer it, Ron, if you come out on a run with me. Just to make absolutely sure he hasn't blown the engine up. He looks that sort, does that look? Hey, Fred. Those are these false teeth. You what? What's all that? Enough proof here to hang you, mate. I thought I'd tied it up. You've no chance, have you, Fred? You've got one foot on the scaffold and the body's not even been discovered proper yet. I say, I've been thinking. If I played stum about this lot, Mrs Walker would blame Hilda, wouldn't she? You know what I mean? With Hilda being a bit cack-handed, like, she'd think she'd uh, knock the sideboard with the vac or a clogs or something. What's wrong with that? Hilda would know she'd never done it. She'd be like a dog with a rat. Worrying till she finds out who it were who really did it. Sniffing here, smelling there. Turning out facts that have now to do with it. Innocent little things. Like it were you who bought that frilly pink cover for the spare bog roll. Looks very nice. I know it does, Fred. But some folk might just start offering to buy you a sweet sherry instead of a pint of bitter. No, I reckon you could make it worse blaming Hilda. Tell you what, then. Yeah, that's it. I could blame it on to Fat Elf, couldn't I? Yeah, that's it. You know, he has these, uh, you know, these funny terms, a bit queer in the head, like. That's it. I could say that uh, we did it when we were uh, restraining him, like. Even worse. Why? Well, you know what Mrs Walker will do then, don't you? She'll be round there with a dozen homemade cherry buns doing a lady vicar act. If you have a problem of any sort, Alf, you know you can talk to me about it in the strictest confidence. Then he'll have a turn. Nah. I reckon he'd be looking to introduce your conk to his fist. What am I going to do, then? I don't know, Fred. You know, I'd help you cock if I could. Do I? I suppose you could try a spot of brown boot polish as a sort of stopgap till you come up with something better. Yeah. I've only got ox blood. It's either that or yours, Fred. There's a penny drop yet, eh? Penny? Well, you know why he was here, don't you? Yeah, to collect his car. Ah, to jump up and down on my guts. That's before he'd had him for garters. Why? Well, don't act the innocent with me, Brian. You took that car last night, didn't you? Didn't you? Yeah. Look, but just to take Gail out. Look, Ron, she wasn't feeling too bright. I mean, I brought it back. There was no harm done. You can see I was giving it a road test. A road test at one o'clock this morning? No wonder Gail's not feeling too bright, keeping her out till that time in her condition. How do you know? Because he saw you. He thought his car had been nicked, didn't he? So he calls the police, doesn't he? The police? They come and get me, we had to come down here. The car was back by then, but the engine was still warm, wasn't it? What did they say? Well, I told them there must have been a misunderstanding. You took the wrong car by mistake. Thanks. Well, it's a good job he's a pal of mine, isn't it? I mean, I've done him a few favours. So it's all under control, then, eh? Oh, no. Now there's still one thing left to do, lad. What? What's that? That's fire you. You're finished here, Brian. I mean, just taking Gail home, nobody'd have bothered. Taking a customer's car on a night out? That's not on. And you knew it wasn't on. But you thought you'd take a chance, didn't you? I'm sorry, lad. Yes, Mr. Mark. Hello, Annie, love. Had I got all of you, love? Oh, it was hardly a holiday, Alf. It was more a duty visit to my daughter and her husband. Lots of things to discuss and to put right. Have you ever considered what it must be like to be Annie Walker's son-in-law? Diabolical. Everything as it should be, Bet. Yes, hasn't Fred said it is? 
Oh, well, I'd like a second opinion. That little punch-up you had last night, Al, yeah. hasn't half given me a lot of pleasure today. Oh, hey, I've forgotten all about that. There's Freddie Lumber over the sideboard. $64 question, love. Man, put an extra orange in my bag, then give me a wink. Well, what? Go on. He was winking at me. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Brian. What are you doing now? Brian? Are you not well, Brian? Now, you was the one... I've like... got the push. You what? I've been sacked. Oh, don't be daft. I have. Why else do you think I'm sat here at this time? Why? What have you done? Brian! We were seen out last night in that car. So? The bloke who owns it saw us. He thought we'd pinched it, so he calls the police. But you hadn't pinched it. You took it back. Well, he went spare, didn't he? So Ronnie, he just fired me. Just like that? Yeah, he just paid me off. What are you supposed to have done wrong? I mean, you just borrowed the car to fetch Gail home. What's wrong with that? I should have took it straight back. What are we going to do? We'll have to get another job, won't I? Many jobs. Oh, now, love, they come. Well, they're on. You know they're on. What about the house? How are we going to live? What about the baby? <laughs> Don't worry, Brian. It's only to be expected in her condition, lovey. You know, he reckons he's not seeing much of Karen nowadays, but I, I reckon different. I mean, why else would he cover himself with aftershave just to come to work? You want to sniff at him? He smells like the inside of your handbag. I bet he don't even shave, do you, Martin? Let alone use aftershave. Of course I shave. Feel that? <laughs> yeah, I didn't I tell you he's a sex maniac? <laughs> different to Jerry, isn't he? Do you remember Jerry Booth? Yeah. He used to blush every time he answered the phone to a woman. But not different to you. It's true. Mr. Fairclough reckons that when he was a lad, there were so many girls wanted to go out with him that he had to raffle himself off. Bit different now, Chuck. Now the older flag day for him. <laughs> Just watch it, Ginger. Anyway, thanks for the tea, Mrs. Fairclough. It's better than he makes. Gerardo. <laughs> He's still going out with Karen, no danger. And don't it titillate you? Titillate? It's one of Mavis's bold words. Listen, is there any news on the Honourable Arnold front? Well, he had to go at Martin this morning, but he's staying clear of me. He knows what's good for him. You're not getting paid, though, are you? No, and he's not getting his flipping door done, either. So, in other words, it's Yabu to you? Well, it's down to him, isn't it? Blast them. Hello. Hello. Uh. You tired? Yes, I suppose I am. Although I don't see why I should be. I haven't done very much all day. Business still slack? Well, people are just not buying the knickknacks anymore. You know, the surprise present for Peter. Peter? The budgie. Oh. Poor Peter. Yes. You know. Is that door sticking worse? Or is it my imagination? No, it is getting worse. People are beginning to notice the look of it, too. I saw Mrs Walker's eyebrows shoot up when she passed this afternoon. Yes, but it's hardly a good advert for Faircloth. No, love. Tonight. Don't be daft. No, I can't. Honest, I forgot I told my mum I'd go to a sale of work with her. Oh, you can get out of that, can't you? No, I can't. She'll have got tickets and that. You know, told her mates I'm going down. You know what they're like? I want to show you off. They're embarrassing. What about me? I'm sorry. They'll be other nights. Hold on. Hang on a minute. Look, 
I might not have the key to the office on other nights. Oh, I thought it was yours to keep. Yeah, it is, but he might change his mind and take it back or, or lose his and want to borrow oh, mine. It's not very likely that, is it? Yeah, but it could happen and then we'll be sorry, won't we? It'll be a chance miss and I'm telling you, we'd regret it if we was in the park, you in the could cold... You the birds out the trees, you could, couldn't you, when you want something? Oh, come on, be honest. Do you want to come and all? It's better than a boring old sale of work. Oh, can you, big head? I might like to go to a sale of work for all you know. Rubbish. There'll be nothing worth buying. And it'll all be your mum going, this is my daughter, Karen, you'll be getting all this. I'm telling you, you'll end up drinking a cup of tea and nibbling on a biscuit. How can I get out of it? Think of something. Like what? I don't know, babysitting. I'll try, but I'm not promising. Oh, you'll think of something, because you find me irresistible, don't you? Oh, you must be joking. I can take you in the office now if you want. Mm, I think I'll be safe with my mum tonight. Give us a kiss, then. Oh, come on. If I'm letting off the TV, Dad will make sure I go with him. Oh, Willie. Hey, you are, dear. Oh, thanks, Mrs Walker. Was I ready for that or was I? I'm pal-fagged, as they say, nozzle twistle, I think. I don't look it. I was just thinking how fabulous you looked. Liar. Oh, I say anything in here. Part of the service. <laughs> uh, I'll get you change. Sure. Uh, gin and tonic, was it? Yes, please. You're overdoing it, Fred. See, Emily's door is still boarded up. Seem to be having quite a little feud in there. Yeah, it seems that Len's dug his eagles in. So has Arnold come to that. And poor Emily in the middle. There you are, love. Tell her. Now then, Mrs Walker, is there anything else I can do? I don't think so, Fred, no. no. Well, I'll just pop through and see if all the lights are off. Hmm. <gasps> Bed. Has Fred been losing money again in gambling dens? Not that I know of, Mrs. Well, Walker. Well, something's the matter. Even more ingratiating than usual. <laughs> well, as I was saying, dear, poor Emily. I wonder if she realised how stubborn Arnold is before oh, she married him. Yes, I think she's realised a lot more since she's married him, like most of us. Not in my case, dear. Jack was an open book to me. Ah, then. But you, Mrs. Walker, were more discerning than the rest of us. <laughs> I suppose I must be. All the lights are switched off, Mrs. Walker. Right, well, I should go and switch them on again, because I fancy a cup of tea. You're losing your nerve, Fred. You, Sive? Oh, just a quick lager, love. I'm parched. Right. Hello, Elsie. Hello, Abby. Hey, what's up with your girl? In what respect? Well, she rang me this afternoon and asked for a job back. Have a job back? Has she gone bonkers or something? Seems a bit down to me. What's she doing asking for a job back? She's only got a couple of months to go. Oh, I don't know, love. Kids these days know everything, and more than we did, and we knew everything, didn't we? Where are you supposed to be? Baths, where are you? Babysitting. Hey, you've not got your cousin with you, then. I have. It'll not be wet. Yeah, well, I'll run it under the tap, won't I? Hmm. Amy, Dad keeps asking if I'm still going out with you. No, Dad. <laughs> I thought policemen were supposed to be able to tell when you're lying. Oh, he can't. He's never been able to. I'm not so sure about Elsie, you know. She keeps giving me funny looks. And Mr Fairclough's always talking about you. Why? What's he said? He says I'm crackers to go out with one girl. Do you think he knows? Nah, he's just guessing. Do you think you crackers just going out with one girl? If I did, I wouldn't, would I? Perhaps I'm the only girl you can get. That's a load of old rubbish. See, Thompson fancies you. Who's she? Just a friend. What's she look like? Dead ugly. I bet she's not. Would you be interested if she was attractive? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, she's not. She's dead ugly. Yeah. Anyway, how's your ear doing? Oh, it's nearly healed. Oh, yeah. I still think you would have looked fab with an earring in. I mean, they're all wearing them, all the groups and that. Yeah, I felt a bit daft. Dave Robinson wears one. Who's he? Just somebody who fancies me. There is a div. He's not. He looks like Dave Bowie. Why aren't you with him tonight, then? How do you know I'm not going out with him tomorrow night? You're not, are you? I might be. Of course I'm not. Don't be daft. <laughs> Put the torch off. I don't like it when it's on. She's not spotted it yet. Well, maybe her eyes aren't what they used to be. You mean they're not like radar anymore, just like a cat? She'll sort it out all right, don't you worry. And when she does, she's going to find out that it weren't me that flipping started it all, definitely. It were you that got aerated first, mate. Oh, give over it. Were you chucking your weight around, weren't it? Rubbish. Well, if you two are going to have a fight, do you mind going in the street? I've come in here for a quiet drink. 
Just because I won that 13 nicker there. Gambling as well, Fred. Vandalism, orgy and gambling. You don't believe in doing things by halves. I'll say that for you, Fred. They're just carrying on the fight they started last night, them two. So when you think about it, don't fellas argue a lot. Do they yak as like I'm a very peaceable sort of fella, me, when I'm left alone? It's to others. I wonder if I could have a word with you, Len. Uh, I tried your house, but... Yeah. You want a drink? Oh, no, thank you. It's an errand rather than a social call. And uh, what can I do for you? Well, uh... Aren't you better sit down, then? It's about the door, Len. Will you please come and fix it tomorrow and give me the bill and I'll pay it. Tomorrow? Oh, I'm up to my eyes in it now, look. Please, Len, I want the door fixing because it's an eyes, so and quite honestly, I can't stand any more of this unpleasantness between you and Arnold. So will you please come? He'll be there. Has Arnold sent you? Let's just say I'd rather he knew nothing about it. See you in the morning, then. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I knew it. What did I tell you? I knew they'd come cap in hand eventually. A woman's just shown a bit of common sense, as per usual. That's what's happened. And I only hope it doesn't land her in worse trouble. Well, I don't understand it. I don't understand how you could be so blooming irresponsible, Brian. I didn't realise, did I? Look, I didn't know we'd be dead and lucky. Well, I don't know what your dad's going to say when he finds out. Mm. What got into you? I mean, it's not like you putting your job at risk. Especially at a time like this. Just for a night out. It wasn't just him, Ivy. Oh. What's she got to do with it? Well, it was my idea, if you must know, Ivy. It was my idea to go out. Yeah, well, I should have guessed you'd have something to do with it, shouldn't I? We only went for a meal, for God's sake. We didn't go mad. In somebody else's car. Crikey, if anybody ought to have more sense than you did, didn't you? Especially at your age. Oh, thank you. Still, that's your lifestyle, isn't it? Live for today and tell with the consequences. For everybody. Look, of course I wouldn't have let him do it if I'd known this was going to happen. What do you think I am? Oh, leave it, man, will you? Look, it's happened. There's no point to keep going on about it. Look, I'll get another job. Where? How, Brian? There's more than two million unemployed. That's what I said. Well, now, you're one of them now, aren't you? Oh, thanks. Well, you are. And there's a baby on the way, isn't there? You've oh. this house to pay for. But steady on, love. I, I thought I'd go down to that garage tomorrow, try to talk to his boss. Oh, no. Oh, no. If anybody does that, I will. I don't cry, love. Not anymore. I can't believe it. What are we going to do? <laughs> we'll manage, love. You'll see. Look, it's going to be all right. This time yesterday, we both had jobs to go to. We were earning. What's happened to Please us? Please don't cry, love. Come on. <laughs> Look, your mum's coming, love, eh? Stop there. <laughs> Lovey, come on. Now, don't take on. Get... Do you know, in two weeks, you'll be laughing about this. You will. You'll be laughing, you. Oh, come on. Get away from me. If it hadn't have been for you, none of this would have happened. If it wasn't for you insisting, Brian took us out in that car. Oh, now, Gail, be fair. Don't blame your mother, love. It was her fault. I borrowed the car, love. I borrowed the car to bring you home from the calf. So don't blame your mother. Yeah. I need to take it straight back, too, if it hadn't been for her wanting to enjoy herself. You never think of anything else. But it was for you, Gail. That wasn't it, didn't I say? For me? What have you ever done for me? You made me give up my job as well. Now my throat. But, lovey, you'd have had to give it up sooner or later, wouldn't she, Brian? Now, wouldn't she have had to give it up? You couldn't have carried on working, love. Not the way you are. <laughs> another job, won't you, Brian, won't yes, you? Yes, of course I will. Don't you know anything? Don't you know what's going on? There are two million unemployed out there. You don't think of things like that, do you? You think of nothing but yourself and going out with your fancy fellas and getting kicked out and coming here and ruining our lives. Hey, I want you out of that hey, house, hey, Brian. Hey, love, come on, love. 
afraid. I want her out. Now, is that clock right, Em? Did you check it by the pips? How did I? No, I didn't. Now, what did I say before I went upstairs? Make sure the clock is right, I said. Even if it's only a minute out. A minute is a minute. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I must have been doing something else. Oh, I'll forgive you. Well, uh, all being well, I'll see you for lunch at one. Oh. Oh? Oh, does that interfere with your plans? No, it doesn't matter. I, I thought I might go into town, but... Yes, well, that's why I'm coming home today, because I'll have to go into town tomorrow and probably have lunch there. And the thought of two consecutive lunches out is more than I can bear. Is that another tribute to my cooking? Well, what other reason could there be, apart from the prices they charge, which defeats me absolutely? Now, last week, when I went to Marshall's, I called in at a place next door, a nice little sandwich bar. You know, nothing special but nice. Well, I'm stood there with a ham sandwich in one hand and a vanilla slice in the other, and there's this woman in front of me with two cream cakes and a pot of tea for two, for which she's being charged £1.40. So I quietly put my sandwich and the vanilla slice back. I go across the road to a Chinese restaurant where I get a very good three-course luncheon for £1.65, including VAT. It is ridiculous, isn't it? Should we lead the crusade? Should we take to the barricades? Tomorrow. <laughs> All right, tomorrow. <laughs> Meanwhile, back to the jungle. Uh, well, bye. I'll, uh, I'll see you at one. Bye. Len? Yeah. I'll leave that out the back, mate. Hmm? That. Leave it out the back along with the tools. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take the door off, carry it through there, and do the job out the back, eh? Yeah, yeah, right. God, blimey, these kids, they don't wake up till half ten nowadays, you know. And Arnold's coming back at one. Will you be able to get it finished? What, at one o'clock? Oh, if you could. Otherwise... One o'clock? Oh, well, that's pushing it a bit, love. Well, I know, but that's the time. Um, should I take the door off? You mean before we carry it through there? Yeah. Hey. A very good idea, that mate, yeah. Go on, get on with it. I don't know whether it's me getting older or these crates getting heavier. It's all of us, Fred. Policemen get younger, stairs get steeper, it gets later. Oh, am I late? This flaming watch it has a lot to answer for, dear. It is only five minutes, Mrs. Walker. Five minutes may seem nothing when weighed against eternity, but there are times, Bet, when it can be vital. Yes, Mrs. Walker. For want of a nail, the shoe was lost, eh, Mrs. Walker? Five minutes can become ten, ten can become fifteen. And before you know it, I'm not even coming in at all. No, I'm sorry, Mrs. Walker. I'll be in early tomorrow, I promise. And the next day? Who knows? Maybe even the day after. No, I take your point, Mrs. Walker. Good. Well, then we must have a little discussion about something if you'll come through. In the living room? In the living room. Now, can you see something on that right-hand door? It looks like a scratch, It Mrs. is a Walker. scratch, and a very big scratch. <laughs> Mrs. Ogden, I presume? No, I don't think it was Hilda. In fact, I know it wasn't. Well, it very much bears her hallmarks. What has she been doing this time? Putting wire wool in her duster again? By it, you've got a fantastic memory. Well, she's a very fantastic mess. Well, it wasn't her this time. Well, whoever it was seems to have been making very clumsy attempts to repair the damage. Hilda was telling me she found half a sausage roll behind that chair yesterday morning. Are you suggesting that somebody scratched the sideboard with a sausage roll? No, I'm not suggesting that, Mrs Walker. All I'm saying is, somebody has been up to a bit of no good. I've got a fair idea who it is. 
And it definitely isn't Hilda. Now, Bet, we do not want a mole in our midst. Apart from you and Mrs Ogden, I only employ Elizabeth and Fred, and I'm absolutely capable... Mrs Walker, I wouldn't dream of naming no names. All I'm saying is, he's been acting very funny this past couple of days. There you are, Emily. You shouldn't have any problem with that now. I've taken a bit more off the bottom, just in case. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. We've had enough of that, haven't we? All right, go and get it on. Then bring the glass through here, the putty and any tools you think we might need, and let me know when you're ready for me. Right. Oh, I've left me cup on the draining board, Mrs Swain. Oh, thank you. Would you like another? No, no, not till he's finished hanging it. Go on. Mind you, I wouldn't say no to another one, you know, if you're putting the kettle on. <laughs> Cheers, Chuck. Do you know you're worrying me? You. All the vitality's gone. You're not even shouting at me in the same tone of voice. Look, you just count yourself lucky. You've never had no kids, then out but trouble. Yeah. I'll get dinner on, Mrs. Walker. All right, then. You weren't nervous, Mrs. Tilsley, but Bet did have a son who was killed in Northern Ireland. You joking? No. Not generally known, so keep it to yourself. Oh, yeah. Hello, love. Listen, will you get drinks and bring them over to the table? I want to talk to you. What's up? No. So was somebody worse off than yourself, isn't there? Hey, I love. Perfect. If it starts sticking again, give it a knock. Day or night, Mrs. Swain. He's right. on night shift. <laughs> I'll get the check. Ta. Thank you for doing it so quickly. Ah, oh, it's a pleasure, love. I'm glad it's all over. Not quite. It will be when I tell Arnold what I've done. I had nearly went airless when I told him. I wasn't exactly chuffed myself. Yeah, I know, look, Brian, don't worry about it too much. There's nothing to be ashamed of, you know, being out to work these days. Flaming mother of gales. Don't blame her, ma'am. I took the car. I should have known flaming better. Yeah, you should. Where have you been this morning? Uh, it's been looking around. I heard Scots were after mechanics. I went down. There was nothing doing. Were you a good worker? I've not got a reference, have I? And when he said, why did you leave her on Sykes? I mean, I had to tell him. Well, why for heaven's sake? Because they're all mates, ma'am. He just has to pick the phone up. Well, look, don't go shouting around, Brian. Keep it to yourself. But you just said there's not to be ashamed of. Well, there is no, but I mean, I, I don't want everybody knowing his business, do I? Any road, it's not finished yet, because I'm going to go up there and I'm going to have a word with that Ron Sykes. Ma'am, you're not my shop steward. I know I'm not, but by it, you want one, Brian. You can't just go sacking all we want. No. Do you hear me? No. I see Fairclough gave in. Now, what did I say, Em? Be firm, be resolute, and we will win the day. You see, Em, when right's on your side, never give in. No, love. No, I'm sorry, mate. I can't do a thing for you before next Tuesday. Well, it's you who's going on holiday, not me. I'd help you if I could, but I can't. I've already got more work than I can handle as it is. Right. I hope we get fixed up. Cheers. Ta -da. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, love. It's been of my life, that phone. What can I do for you? I'm Brian's mother. Brian? Oh, it's Brian. Yes, Brian. In that you sacked illegally. Oh, I look, Missy. Now you look, mister. I don't know how well you know your Employment Protection Act, but you can't just sack who you want to when you want to. You've got to give him proper official warning on paper first. Then, if he does it again, then you can sack him. He could take you to tribunal. He can take me where he likes. But before you come down here shooting your mouth off, Mrs Len Murray, you better get your facts straight. If that lad of yours thinks he's got a case, well, he'll let him do as he thinks fit. He can whistle for his job, that I can promise you. He did not. Didn't you? He did note. Police come and get me out of bed in the middle of the night. I had to stop him coming round to your place. Plus, I've lost one of my best customers, and probably a few more when word gets out. Don't come telling me he did note wrong. Oh, come on. They all borrow cars, you know. Damn well they do. Well, they all do wrong then, don't they? You flaming hypocrite. You turn a blind eye when nobody's bothering, and as soon as somebody starts shouting, you go and sack an innocent lad. Look, sling it up, will you, before you say something you're going to regret. Why can't you give him his job back? I mean, he's a good worker. I've told you, there's no work for him here. That's not what you said on phone. Look, Nosy, that was a job I didn't want, which is a self-employed man I'm entitled to turn down. Now, do me a favour, will you? 
Get on your way. You're wasting your time and mine, and mine's money. I haven't finished yet, not by a long chalk. You'll finish with me. There's no more to say. Now, on your way. <laughs> Get up the three. Oh, Look, you've got to stay on that side because... Give me a couple of fines, Pet, will you? You're coming in Fred, ask not for whom the buzzer buzz is, for it buzzes for thee. What she wants? Ceiling painting, flowers arranging, a back scratching, could be anything. By heck, there's no happier sight than a couple of fellas watching a pint being pulled. Did you want me, Mrs Walker? Yes, I did, Fred. Come in, sit down. Thank you very much. I should say lie down, really, because <laughs> I want you to think of me as your psychiatrist. I want you to unburden yourself. And in order to see into the inner recesses of your mind, I suggest that we play a little game of word association. <laughs> you know, the sort of thing. I say a word and you say just what comes into your mind. Yes, Ready? Mr. Walker. Right, Mr. Walker, yes. Sideboard door. Sideboard door? <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? Hmm. Doesn't suggest sausage rolls, drinks after hours, young ladies of dubious habits. No, 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 Mrs. Walker, there was, there was no young ladies, definitely no young ladies. No. But something was going on. Well, uh, it was my birthday, see, while, uh, while, while you were away. Really? How convenient. Ah, well, I, I just had uh, one or two of the lads around for a. Uh, for a birthday drink, you know, and, uh, well, it were an accident. It were Fat Aff's fault. He, he pushed me and I had this fork in my hand. I see, yes. Hmm. Well, now, that wasn't so terrible, was it? <laughs> no. All you have to do is to have the side door repolished. Of course, it may be necessary for the French polisher to repolish the entire sideboard. But that's a risky run, isn't it, when you have birthday parties in my living room? Yes, Mrs Walker. Yes. Well, that'll be all. Uh, yes, Mrs Walker. Of course you can. I've just come to pick up my things. I found myself a flash. Great. Is Gail in? Yes, it says I'm the rest. Do you think I could see her before I go? You know, just... Yeah, I'll give her a call. Uh, Gail, love, uh, your man's here. I couldn't leave you like this. I sat in that bus station and my whole life flashed past me and there wasn't ten seconds worth watching. Where are you going? Don't worry, I've got somewhere nice. I've just got to get all my bags there. Brian, you couldn't... I couldn't borrow a car, if that's what you're after. Oh, come on now, don't rub that in. No, you couldn't run down to the corner and phone me a cab. You're cause... throwing your money about a bit, aren't you? I just can't face buses again and those bags weigh a ton. Go on, Brian. Yeah, do you want me to get in there? Oh, yeah, yeah, right away, eh? Yeah, OK. I've washed your tights through. They're hanging over the bath. Oh, lovely. You shouldn't have bothered. They're in their last legs anyway. So am I. I'm no good to you and I'm no good to myself. Oh, now, ma'am, stop it. Shall I... Shall I go and get his job back? No. You'll only make things worse. But I'm only trying to help, love it. I know, ma'am. I wish you wouldn't. One might just treat yourself to one of them. Well, get in quick, kid, because they're going like hot okay. I suppose you've spent up, have you? Oh, into your comic. You're always making me laugh. What's more than I can say about you? <laughs> two pints, Fred, please. Hey, never mind two pints. I want a word with you. Get over here. 
Her ladyship's twigged about that sideboard door and she's told me I've got to have it French polished and I'm counting on you for after dibs. Well, keep counting. I wish you luck. It's got nothing to do with me. You've overmate it. Were you that pushed me, weren't it? I didn't ask you to fall over, did I? Listen, you won 13 quid for eating cheese. Pay it out of that. I love you, Charlie. You blew the lot. Not only that, but most of me I was keeping as well. So if you want food, another little luxury. I've been looking for you to give you this. A check for the original amount. No more, no less. And if you'd listened to me and taken it in the first place, there wouldn't have been any of this unpleasantness. Might I suggest that you put it down to experience? And might I suggest that you take a running jump in the cut and take that with you? What did you do that for, you daft devil? Well, you can chuck money away, so can I. Oh dear. Yes, oh dear. I've just given Len Fairclough a check. He tore it up and stuffed it back in my pocket in full view of everyone in the public house. Now, why? Why should he do a thing like that? I tried to tell you, Arnold, but you didn't make it very easy. He'd already been paid. By you? Well, yes, of course, by me. The full amount. Everything he asked for. You paid him for repairing that front door on top of the original estimate. Well, I didn't want any more trouble, Arnold. It was my fault. You were aware that I had no intention of paying him. Well, yes, and yet, but... despite that, you went behind my back. No, I told I'm you, I... am amazed at you. Arnold... Amazed! I really am, Emily. Where is she? Oh, in the bathroom. I don't want her interfering, Brian. She won't, love. She's just worried about us. Who isn't? Why, well, you've got that bathroom nice. Brian did the tiling behind the sink. Oh, I thought he must have. It's lovely, Doc. Well, you didn't have to bother with tea. Oh, well, I was making one anyway. And a biscuit. No, love, that's not what I've come for. Uh, Brian, me and Dad's been talking. You know that holiday money, you know, that we didn't use? That £300 that he gave us back? We'd like you to have it, love. I mean, it's down to 200 now, but I can get it out at bank in the morning. No, it's OK, ma'am. I've been managed for a couple of weeks. I've got my back pay, my tax rebating. Well, some will come up after that, eh? Well, it's there if you want it. Thanks, ma'am. Well, we're settled, me and Bert. I mean, we've got everything we want. Well, nearly. I don't know. I thought it was bad enough when me and him got wed, but nowadays, with this lot hanging round your necks, it's not fun, is it, for you young uns, love? You can say that again. Where are you? Aren't we friends? Where are you? Oh, that's disco. Well, I am, aren't I? My own private disco. Our own private disco. Oh, yeah. Our own private disco. What's that? I don't know. Shh. Right. Let's be having you. Slowly. Talking about redundancies down at your dad's place. Well, they're talking about redundancies everywhere, Mum. Well, it'll get better. It can't go on like this, can it? I wonder if he'll ever get a job. He's not going to be a he. She's going to be a she. And she won't have to worry about work because she's going to be beautiful and land herself a millionaire. <laughs> that was that, you know. It's not fair. Oh, don't talk to me. I used to go to school with one. <laughs> because it's too short planks you want, but you ought to see her tall, big brown eyes. Ooh, and what a complexion. Anyway, she's going down Rochdale Road one day, and this big Rolls Royce pulls up, and a fella pops his head out and says, will you marry me? Mind you, we found out afterwards he'd had his eye on her for a week or two, you know. Only owned a chain of garages all over North Manchester. <laughs> did she marry him? Of course she did. You weren't that daft. <laughs> I see her now every now and again, staggering out of Kentle Mills, weighed down with her parcels, and I could still see her and stand up for She couldn't even spell her own name. It's not fair. I think I'll go to the garage tomorrow and uh, ask my job back. Will you? Why not? It's worth a try, isn't it, love? It's not, Brian. Eh? It's not worth you going, love. You'll only be disappointed. What do you mean? Well, I went round to see her on Saturday, didn't I? Don't look at me like that, Brian. I had to. I am your mother. I can't help thinking about a pair of you. I mean, there's, there's a baby, aren't we? And, and now you're out of work. Well, thanks for your help, Mr. Furcliffe. 
Sorry we had to drag you around, but we've got to make sure. Yes, yes, of course you have. You just watch it in future, lad. Did you and all of. Oh, don't you go. I haven't finished with you yet. I've got to phone my wife because she thinks this place is burning down. Why did you tell him your wrong name? He said your name was Smith. I had to. He doesn't know me, but I know him. He works at me dad's station. Your dad's station? Fine, Martin. What if he finds out? <laughs> The trials and tribulations of Brian and Gail continue in tomorrow's classic Coronation Street at the same time. Coming up next this Thursday lunchtime, passions run deep in the beautiful countryside that surrounds Emmerdale.